that. College football is back on ESPN. And tonight, the reigning Southern Conference champions get their title defense underway here in Birmingham, Alabama, as the Shorter Hawks have made the short drive over from Rome, Georgia, to take on the Sanford Bulldogs. At Bobby Bowden Field here at Cybert Stadium, glad to have you with us on this Thursday night, kicking off week one of the college football season. Alongside former wide receiver Damian Mitchell, I'm Blake Gardner. Lyndon Blake will join us from downstairs in just a bit as well. But Damian, both these two teams just chomping at the bit, ready to get this season started. Absolutely. As cliche as it sounds, you have two teams that are coming in here 0-0. Whatever happened in 2022 is behind you. Everybody's pressing forward to 2023 and getting it kicked off here in the most wonderful time of the year, college football. Well, it looks like we're about to kick things off right now. Samford will kick two shorter, and we are underway to get 2023 started. The Hawks won the toss, elected to receive, and they're going to have decent field position just across the 25, maybe the 26 is where the Hawks offense will set up shop Damien with their veteran quarterback, Harold Cook. Yeah, Harold Cook, who stepped in last year in backup duty and started the last three games, he's really started to have his way here in 2023. When you listen to Coach Morrison, he has full confidence in Cook, and he knows that he has ability to not just run the ball but also throw it at a high level, and he's really looking forward to having an explosive offense this year in 2023. So it's Cook and the Hawks who have possession first. Ready to get this 2023 season going. It's Cook and Justice Durant in the backfield for Shorter. Opening play is a throw short to the right side and not a whole lot there. Noah Martin and company quick to rally to the football and it gives us a chance to check in with the third member of our crew. Lyndon Blake down on the sideline has a little bit on the field conditions today, Lyndon. Hey guys, I don't want to, you know, call this football weather, but what I can tell you is it is 85 degrees down here on the field and it feels great for those of us who have been in Birmingham, Alabama for the last couple of days. We felt intense heat, so I think these two teams are going to be pretty happy with the weather that we have today. I will say we may even get into the low 70s, mid 70s by the end of the second half, guys, so looking forward to it. Thanks, Lyndon. Big hit at the point of attack by Jaden Mosley, one of the new linebackers, Damian. Yeah, and when you talk to Coach Boone, defensive coordinator for the Bulldogs, he told us that we'd be calling his name a lot. And he, he made a play right there, stopped him in for a short game. Now you got him in third and long, a big down right here for the Bulldogs. Officially third and a long 12 for the Hawks. Three wide receivers to the far side of the field. And against a three-man rush, Cook has time over the middle. It is caught, but not a ton there. More lumber laid by Mosley. <laughs> and Shorter goes three and out after the quiet gain from Trevor Dearden. Yeah, again, Jamie Mosley, he's letting everybody know that he is here. Transfers in late, two big licks. And again, you go back to the listen to Coach Boone on the defensive side of the ball, and he knows this team can attack a veteran group there for the Sanford Bulldog defense. A lot of older guys, now their first time playing with each other here on the biggest level, and now you see these guys going out there and performing. So Sanford's defense off to a good start in 2023. Shorter goes three and out. And are forced to punt. The freshman punter, Tyler Simpson. His first action of the campaign. And it's a low in over end kick that ought to be fielded on a couple of hops by Smith. He'll opt to let it bounce. And it takes a shorter roll all the way to the Sanford 27, which is where the Bulldogs offense and Michael Hires, Damian, sets up shop. Yeah, when you look at Michael Hires, a guy who won numerous awards, and he transferred in from a junior college, and game by game you saw him really get comfortable with the offense, the air raid system that Coach Hatcher performs, and the way Michael has full control of this team. There is no question that he is the leader. When we were in meetings with Coach Atcher, he told us even if Peyton Manning were to transfer into Sanford, he would have the hard time beating out Michael Hires for that quarterback spot. There you see what Hires was able to do a year ago, an All-American preseason and postseason a year ago. He takes the shotgun snap. His first pass is almost intercepted. Instead, wow. it's caught on the volley by Ty King, who's got enough for a first down. <laughs> Wow, you want to talk about extreme focus from a receiver. <laughs> he saw the ball get tipped and still being able to focus. Hit his hands. As soon as it hit him, he caught it. King can't snag that one, though. That one falls incomplete. 
You make the spectaculars and drop the easy ones, man. And it's, again, have that focus on that first play. That was, that was amazing. And then to follow it up and have that one, got to be able to make those plays. Again, week one, Russ, just trying to get into the flow of the game. Ty King, one of the wide receivers. Sanford's happy to have healthy from the jump here in this 2023 season. Another short job for Hires, this time near side. DJ Reyes, his first grab of the year, and he's out of bounds across midfield. That's good for 12 more and another Sanford first down. Yeah, and now you're seeing that speed, that tempo of this offense. All you need is get is one first down, next play up. They haven't even changed formations in the ending play of this, of this drive. Rias spins through one tackle, gets down to about the 42-yard line, a pickup of about five or six. This is going to be the challenge tonight for this shorter defense. Can they stay lined up against this Sanford tempo? 11 seconds and another snap for Hires and company. This time it's Chandler Smith who's inside the 35 before being knocked out of bounds. There are two markers down. Saw one early. I think it might be a legal formation. I don't know if the receiver on the far end of the sideline, if he had established if he was on or off. Get to hear from our referee tonight for the first time. It's Brian Holland who leads this refereeing crew, and it looks like it's against Shorter. Offside. Defense. Number 99. That penalty's declined. Result of the play. First down. And there you see that tempo starting to take effect there in the first drive and how warp speed that this Sanford offense has been able to run these past years under Coach Hatcher, and they're just kick, picking up where they leave off. Hires claps for the football on first down against pressure, picked up well, and Rias has the grab inside the 20. And one thing about Michael and his, his pocket presence and his poise, he's been accurate on every throw this drive. Besides that one drop, I mean, he's been perfect. Kind of going back to last year, almost completing 80% of his passes, and you can see that he's comfortable. He knows this offense. He doesn't have to do too much. He knows exactly what the expectation is. Chase Stanton, his first carry of the year, goes for a couple, officially three. The senior from Florida who's back for one more ride. Stanton doesn't get the football this time. It tires on the keep, and he's dropped. Big hit laid there just after the line of scrimmage by the fifth-year strong safety, Milton Adams, the transfer from Mississippi Valley State. You know, coming down to make a play right there on the read option. The defensive end crashes down. Michael pulls it. He's got to be an athlete out there. On third and long, Hires is dropped and loses the football. It's still loose and finally scooped up. It looks like Sanford got it back around the 41. Jay Stanton's hustle saves a turnover, but it's a loss of 24. And it forces Sanford out of field goal range. Yeah, they're fortunate that it wasn't a turnover. They're just rolling out, trying to make a play. Big play, put his hand on the ball, it falls out. And trying to scoop and score it right there, ends up just falling into the Sanford players' hands. And again, it, at least you didn't get a turnover, but you do have to punt the ball. But that was a good drive right there for Sanford building it up. It's just unfortunate they're on third down. That's what you don't want there deep close in the red zone. Officially a sack and a forced fumble for Jathan Willis, the sophomore from Dublin, Georgia. Fortunately, Josue Alexander couldn't pick it up. Punt in over in, drops at the three and into the end zone for a touchback. There is a flag and it could be for kick catch interference. First career punt for Will Thorley. Runs into the end zone, but we'll see what the marker is officially. Not really sure what the, what the guy was doing. It almost seems like he just slammed him down right there as he was looking to field the ball or. What's the result of the play? Another look at it here for the high end zone cam. Yeah, it's almost like a like a kick catch interference, I guess you would call it. So the referees are going to talk it over, and we'll find out what the official call is on the other side of our first commercial break. Scoreless so far through the first five plus minutes here in Birmingham between Sanford and Shorter. How can we target deadly diseases with better precision?
directly inside the tumor for cancer patients. We're also pioneering an implantable device that administers precise and timely doses of medication to those with difficult to manage chronic conditions. That's the difference between practicing medicine and leading it. Houston Methodist, leading medicine. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, mango is a mood. One taste of our Mango Berry Cosmo or Mango Monsoon smoothies in vacay mode is on. Ooh, and our Mango Bacon Brie Flatbread is a total vibe. Get your Mango Mojo on at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. It's Tropic time. When you drive a Ram, summer is more than a season. It's an opportunity to get more in before the sun goes down. Make this the summer. You drive America's best light duty pickup. How do plastic bottles turn into this? See how recycling is one of the many ways WM is always working for a sustainable tomorrow at wm.com slash stories. 180, 180. Hello, Patrick Mahomes. Right. Wait, who do you even play for? T-Mobile. And I'm here to protect you from wireless companies that blitz you with phone deals that sack you with a three-year device contract. Even I can get sacked? Not at T-Mobile. They have plans that make upgrades work for you. They even have a plan which makes you upgrade ready every year. Thanks, man. Now can I do the thing? Do the thing. Excellent. Take charge of your upgrades with our best Go 5G plans at T-Mobile. Let's have a huddle. You don't know what huddle is, do you? No. Nah. Back here at Bobby Bowden Field, Seibert Stadium, Sanford Bulldogs and Shorter Hawks tonight. And Shorter coach Zach Morrison knew his team was going to be the underdog tonight, but they get a stop on their first defensive series. And Lyndon, you were down there on the sideline and heard what Coach Morrison had to say to his team right before kickoff. Yeah, Blake, before that big defensive stop for the Hawks, Shorter was already fired up coming out of the gates here at Cyber Stadium. You know, Coach Morrison was already hyped about this team, said they're the most talented that he's had in his six years at Shorter. But just being next to them as they were getting ready to take the field for the first game of the 2023 season, the players were pumping each other up. The ref was telling them, get out on the field. We have a game to start, but they were waiting for all their teammates to come down the steps to have their little moment, fire each other up and, and that's like what Damien was talking about all these teams start out zero to zero so you're going to come out here pumped up and that is exactly what the shorter hawks did thanks Lyndon. shorter's going to have their backs against the wall to start their second offensive series while we were in commercial referee brian holland let us know it was officially a holding call committed by shorter and their backup wide receiver jalen marshall it is a spot foul, so the foul occurred at the two, so the ball placed at the one. That is where the Hawks and Harold Cook set up shop. We're going to talk about self-inflicted wounds. That's a big one, especially when you're going against the number nine team in the FCS. It's very unfortunate, but got a big hill to climb right here on this drive. So Cook from his own end zone gives, and just making it out of the end zone is Justice Durant. Not a whole lot of running room. Garrett Morris, Joseph Mera all rallying to the football for the Bulldogs. And someone lost a lid. That's Dimitri Singleton, the sophomore right guard. So he'll come out. Then on the Sanford side, Jaden Moodley lost his helmet as well. So he has to exit for a play too. <laughs> we've been here for two drives for the shorter offense. And we've called Jaden Mosley's name so many times there early on. And Coach Boone, he was, I mean, he was lit up just explaining how he was all over the field. And there he's coming off for a play. But not many, many, many coaches will tell you on the offensive side, there's not many plays that you have right there on your one-yard line. Quick throw is dropped. Good hit on the far side by the corner. Devin Smith, the transfer from Georgia Tech, breaks it up. That's a big-time play right there. Now you're setting up a third down from the one-yard line. If I'm Coach Boone, I'm probably thinking a little aggressive right here. Really want to apply the pressure and the heat and make them make a bad decision or a quick decision earlier than expected. Chris Boone, the defensive coordinator for Sanford, somewhere behind those black curtains, hiding his signals from view. Third down and 10 for the Hawks. Cook from the gun in his own end zone, looking left, now scrambles out of the pocket. Mosley in pursuit, forces him out of bounds, maybe a gain of a yard, but that's it. Sanford's defense doesn't allow Shorter to get much breathing room to punt this football away. 
I tell you, I know Coop's clock was just spinning. When you're in the end zone, you're in your own end zone, you don't want to hold it too long because you don't know where that pass rush may end up or may leap through. Just try to get as much as you can. That was great coverage right there by the secondary. And, again, calling Mosley's name again there in the second drive and a big-time third down stop. So Shorter will punt it away for the second time tonight and from very tight quarters in their own end zone. Punt is away. Chandler Smith's going to have room to return this from the 40 of Shorter. Smith makes a couple of guys miss. Still on the move. Smith breaks another tackle, makes the punter miss, and is finally dragged out inside the 10. A return of 32 for the fifth-year senior. You want to talk about somebody who is a playmaker. That won't be the last time we hear from Chandler Smith there. You know, as a punt returner, when you have room, all you have to do is make one person miss. And Chandler was on the move, and he made a bunch of people miss. Just in, look at that. The punter of all people slowed him down and had the gang tackle him, but that was a big, big play. Now you're starting off in the red zone for Michael Hires in this offense. Definitely want to right their wrong from the last drive and put it in. Hugh Barbie saved a touchdown for shorter, but field position doesn't get much better than this. First and goal from the eight for the second Samford series. Hires from the gun, good pocket, touchdown. Chandler Smith set up the field position with a punt return, and he's got the first Samford touchdown of 2023. And that was a perfect stem and release for Chandler. I mean, he sized up the guy that was over the top. They were in man. He went up, stalked him a little bit, gave him an inside move, showed Michael his chest, and, I mean, the connection is just like it was in 2022, picking up right where they left off, touchdown, bang your hand and gone post. So a quick drive for the Bulldogs offense. They're on the board first. The new kicker, Wilson Beaverstock, is true on the extra point. And Samford has the first seven points of the evening. Time out of the field, we'll take it with them. First series, Samford was stopped out of the second series. The defense sets it up, the offense cashes it in. The number nine team in the country is on top early here in Birmingham. Tiramisu. Ooh, tiramisu. <gasps> or save up and eat tiramisu in Italy. Okay, little Italy. Autumn in New York, the lights of Broadway. Wait, did I pay the light bill? Yeah. No, I paid it, didn't I? Wait, no. Yes, what? Huh, regions. Tiramisu. 87% of people think about money all the time. Regions convenient new ways to track your transactions, make it easier to get back to the moment. Student section all full up here in Bobby Bowden Field at Cyber Stadium for game one. This 2023 college football campaign. Sanford on top of Shorter, 7-0 as we welcome you back to our coverage from Birmingham tonight. Blake Gardner, Damian Mitchell, Lyndon Blake, your crew here helping kick things off this college football season. Sanford 
turns in quality defensive series, good special teams. Cashed off by Michael Hires finding Chandler Smith. First of many touchdowns this year. Henry Bishop sends it deep for Sanford. It's a short kick returnable around the six yard line for Trey Thomas. Thomas is dumped just in front of the 20 where Shorter will take over. And Damian, so far too serious for Shorter, just one total yard. They've got to find a way to move the football. Yeah, and you're facing an uphill battle with, I mean, with the pursuit that the Sanford defense has been these first two drives. You don't want to help them out. You know, I mean, the field position there, that last drive, definitely put you in the corner, and now you're starting to see what momentum. Now you're fighting with a deficit down 7 nothing. So it's important that the opportunities that you do have, you got to stack them, find a way to put the ball in the end zone or get a field goal. On first down, Cook gives to Justice Durant, trying to turn the corner, could not. Another quality defensive play on the edge. This time it's Josiah Cotton, the senior. And Josiah, a guy that got a lot of playing time last year, kind of bulked up this season going into it. And, I mean, he's playing that, that linebacker position, roaming from sideline to sideline. That was a good, good job right there by keeping his outside uh, shoulder free, scoop, scooping him out and making a big two-string tackle, not to get him around the edge. Linebacker showing up early here for the Bulldogs. Cotton, Mosley, Martin have seven combined stops already. Officially a loss to Lloyd on second and 11. Cook over the middle, incomplete, but flags fly. The contact a little bit early, perhaps, from Devin Smith. Yeah, you can see Devin. He was just trying to get over the top there. It was actually pretty good coverage, but once you start handshaking and putting your hands on the guy, it does reroute him a little bit. That's where you get the flag on you for. Referee's still talking it through. All indications is this is going to be pass interference. Pass interference. Defense, number 23, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So it is Devin Smith called for pass interference, interfering with Jalen Marshall on that slant. And the thing about defensive backs, one thing they tell you or one of your coaches tell you is just you play with your feet first, hands last. But in those situations, you see the ball in the air, you just want to make a play, want to break it up, play through the hands. Got there a tad bit early, ends up with a 15-yarder. Now the referees before first down starts are going to talk over, I think, placement of the ball, whether this was a 15-yard penalty or whether it should have been a spot foul. Week one for everybody. I was about to say. <laughs> the spot and yardage is correct. First down. Thank you, Mr. Holland. So it is officially first and 10 for the Hawks from their own 33. Pass interference penalty officially. Their most positive offensive contribution so far. Straight drop for Cook this time. Slings it out to the flat. Jaden Dollard racing to the edge is knocked out of bounds. And a flag flew in back near the line of scrimmage. I think they're going to get one of the receivers there with a hold late. I don't think he needed to because I think I'm almost positive Mosley had overran it anyway and the screen was already behind him. But right there you see the effort. They're trying to get into it, but I think they might have grabbed the jersey there and had a tug late. During the run, holding, offense, number three, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, remains first down. It's wide receiver Brandon McGill, the offending party. He and John Deedle were both out there blocking. Yeah, and I, that's the thing. I would say Mosley might not have made that play, but it's the pursuit that he has all over the field, maybe that hole was going to stop him from stopping that game from getting anything. But, yeah, as a receiver, man, we're, we're trying to, you know, do everything. We're trying to be as, as selfless as we can and go block for your, for your fellow teammate. Sometimes you grab a hold of that jersey, ends up hitting you with a 10-yard penalty. So on first and long, Cook on the option hits the deck in a hurry. Otherwise, Noah Martin was about to lay the wood. <laughs> yeah, I can I can tell this Sanford defense they don't mind uh, they don't mind pad popping. I will say that. Noah Martin and Josh Mathiason both look ready to lay a big hit on Harold Cook before he went down. Officially a gain of just a couple. So still second down and around 19. 
officially on the field at 21. Work to be done here for the Hawks. Three wide receivers plus the tight end to the flat. Again, this one incomplete. A little bit out front of the sophomore, Justice Duran. A thing for shorter, you can't continue to find yourself in these third and long situations and expect to climb out. Now you're in third plus 10 after the holding penalty. It's been a, it's been a game for self-inflicted wounds for short. You have the holding penalty on the punt, start you back at your own one-yard line, you give up a big play on the punt return. It's just these things are not going to equate to winning football, and you don't want to start off the season having these bad habits, and now you find yourself in a third plus 10 in this situation against a defense that has been pursuing at a high level. On third and long, three-man rush, gets home. Cook is wrapped up and going down. Johnny Johnson and Kobe Stewart meet at the quarterback. Wasn't anything exotic. It was rush three, drop eight. He had nose, two head of fives, and they were just going and just corralling that pocket. He steps in, and everybody swarms down. Find yourself in that situation as a quarterback. That's tough. Trying to read everything in that zone. End up, you can't have that much time. End up with a sack. Johnny Johnson had three and a half sacks to his credit a year ago. He's got his first here in this campaign. After the beneficiaries of the pass interference call, Shorter's offense goes backward. Fourth and very long, forces the Hawks to punt it away once more. Much higher, better punt this time, forces Chandler Smith into a fair catch, which he makes just around his own 40. So Sanford's offense back to work for series number three. Damien, what have you seen so far through a couple of trips for the Bulldogs offensively? Right now, they're executing at a high level. Besides that one fumble, I mean, Michael looks fluid. The offense is operating at a high level. And they kind of look at the, the personnel packages that are in there. They haven't been able to – they haven't needed to switch anything. They just rolling next play, next play, kind of flipping your H around a little bit, the slot guy bouncing around. But everything else has been executed at a high level. Off play action, hires, delivers, just a little bit too tall for Ty King. That's one of the staples of this air raid. They're trying to clear everything out and bring the single receiver back over here. And it was a perfect it was a perfect pass, just a little, little out of the outstretched hands of Ty King. Guy that he's a speedster. If he does get the ball in his hands, I have heard he is the fastest receiver on the roster. It's one second and ten. Hires gives to the new running back to Monte Witherspoon, who doesn't get much, maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Pursuit inside by Ryan Richardson and company for the Hawks. Now Sanford finds them in the third and long. And somebody that Coach Hatcher brought up was Witherspoon early on and said he had a wonderful camp, and now you're starting to see him out, him and Jay Stanton in a nice running back rotation. They're kind of swarmed up for a short game. Higher steps up on third and ten, wants it all, looking for Rias. It's incomplete, but a flag is down, and Rias might have been held as he was trying to break off that route. He was indeed. He had gotten over the top, and as a defensive back, you would much rather just give up the 15-yard or 10-yard holding penalty than to watch him score on a deep post because he was rerouted, turned his hip, and just grabbed on. So I guess in that situation, you <laughs> – you inhibit yourself from getting the, giving up the biggest play for a big play. Holding. Defense, number six, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic, first down. It's Jonathan Lowe, the transfer from Tusculum, who was trying to hold on to DJ Rias. It extends this Sanford drive. Instead of a three and out, the Bulldogs are across midfield. First down, hires with a play fake, under pressure, looking long again. He's off Peyton Ringer's fingertips. That was a good decision by Michael right there, but what you're starting to see a little bit of a leakage right there from the offensive line, kind of, you know, staring at his face, trying to make a, a nice throw over the top. Had a little bit more air under it, he probably runs, over, runs under it, but it's kind of tough when you're trying to step in and you have defensive linemen right in your face, so. Pretty tall challenge for the offensive line right now. Underneath, hires complete to Chandler Smith to about the 41-yard line. A pickup of around eight sets up third and short. Sanford wants to move quickly. He's up 
On third and short, Hires claps for the football. Witherspoon cuts it inside. He's got the first down and then some across the 35 before he's brought down by Jasim Henry. That tempo of the Sanford offense, look at that. They're already lined up for the next play. The defensive line is still trying to figure out where they need to be. Witherspoon ducks forward this time for maybe a couple. By the way, did you see that throw from Cooper Frazier? There were two footballs for a minute. <laughs> Frazier threw it like 30 yards to the Sanford sideline. Hey, listen, he had to look at the refs like, hey, man, you're messing up our tempo, big dog. Hires throws the screen near side, caught, and then quickly dropped is Brendan Jenkins. Good pursuit finds Jonathan Lowe and Hunter Hodson for shorter. Yeah, they sniffed out that screen play pretty quickly. A little jailbreak screen. You want to get back behind your offensive linemen that are flying out. But then that was a great, great run in the alley. And there was a great tackle. And now you got him in third along. Officially a loss of one. Free play, and now it's going to be shut down. And who moved first? Looks like Brooks there, the guard. I think he was a little early getting into his pass set. You'll see things like this in week one. It's first game action, a lot of adrenaline moving on, but you definitely don't want this to be a recurring thing throughout the season. These pre-snap penalties are the ones that you really don't want to see. Offside, oh. defense, causing the offensive player to react. Five-yard penalty, remains third down. So, so much to go in shorter. <laughs> there was movement on both sides up there. And looks like that was the right call. Ryan Richardson may be the first to react. So instead of third down, perhaps 15, it's third and a long four. Hires gives to Witherspoon. Searching for running room, didn't find a whole lot. Hotston cleans it up, and Sanford's going to have a decision to make. Right here early on, you can tell Michael he wants to keep this thing rolling. It's fourth and short. You probably have a good play in your arsenal right here that you know you can go to. Probably look to see if they'll jump and then check to it. Officially fourth down and three. As we roll under the three-minute mark here in the opening quarter. Still plenty of time to snap it. Hires claps for the football on play action. Looking for Smith. He's got him, and he makes a man miss. Chandler Smith in the open field has his second touchdown. And on fourth down and three, Sanford picks up the first down and they have their second touchdown of this opening quarter. 13-0 Bulldogs. You pull it out of your tool shed, literally just an outside guy running flag route to go. Inside guy stem him up, hit him with an out route, and they were in man coverage. No safety help. Make one person miss. You have green grass and another touchdown for Chandler Smith. Again, the two connection that they have, picking up right where they left off in 2022. First two touchdowns of 23. Back at it. The extra point is good. Sanford on top, 14 to nothing. What a start to 2023 for the first team preseason all SOCON selection in the preseason All-American Chandler Smith. A couple of touchdowns in his first quarter of the campaign. And the number nine team in the country is on top by a couple of scores.
all smiles for Moses in the Red Sea here to start week one of college football. Sanford on top of shorter, 14-0. Blake Gardner, Damian Mitchell, Lyndon Blake, your crew here tonight. Lyndon's down on the sideline, and Lyndon, safe to say that connection between Michael Hires and Chandler Smith is picking up right where it left off from a season ago. Uh, yeah, the offseason just seemed to not affect their connection at all. Hires and Smith, I'm sure we'll be hearing that combo all season long. You know, I caught up with them this summer before the big season for them, too. And, and the love they have for each other really just shows off the field as well. We were talking to Smith to see who he modeled his game after. He said Hunter Renfro, you know, the former Clemson wide receiver now playing in the NFL. Then we had to ask, because of course he's going to get props to his quarterback hires, to go, well, who do you think hires resembles most in the NFL? He gave him big props. He said hires reminds him of Joe Burrow. But the reason why he will never tell to Michael's face, he said that Michael has that swagger like Joe Burrow. But again, that's just for us at home. He will never say that to Michael Hire's face. Trey Thomas across the 26. You can't let your quarterback too, too big ahead, you know? <laughs> nah, because especially if you're getting compared to somebody like Joe Burrow. Man, that's how I told it. But, I mean, if you watch Michael play and you watch him and the connection that him and Chandler have, it's like clockwork. And you saw it evolve game in and game out last year. And the two, the two touchdowns that have scored, it's been the connection ever since. There's a flag down at the end of that return right by the shorter sideline around the 35. A couple of guys got tangled up. Yeah, saw some uh, some extracurriculars there after the whistle. Again, these guys have been beating up on each other for, you know, weeks in fall camp, and now you finally get a chance, and sometimes the emotions get the best of you, but you've got to be able to control it, and that's uh, that's how you create winning, winning football. After the play, Question of foul, unnecessary roughness. Kicking team, number 42, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down, shorter. Couldn't tell whether that was Jordan Russell or Gage Green for the Bulldogs. They got locked up with a shorter hawk right in front of Shorter's bench, but it's 15 free yards for Shorter in their best field position of this opening quarter. Across the 40 is where the Hawks set up shop. Harold Cook in the shorter offense trying to find some type of rhythm. A couple of good moves in the backfield by Jaden Dollard, and he turns what looked like a loss into a gain of about six. Yeah, hey, that was some good moves right there. A little leakage there from the offensive line, but being able to make people miss right there, whew, that's, that's probably the biggest play they've had in a while. And that's just win for five yards. And uh, again, that, that was what you need. You build up on that. Sanford ends up giving you a better field position that you've had for a while. Now it's time to execute. Best run of the day so far for the Hawks. Gain a six on first down. It's the big tight end. Deedle in motion on second down. Cook was looking that way. Now we'll take off. Headed towards the Sanford sideline and gets out of bounds just across the 50. Chased out of bounds by Kylan Miller. And it looks like he is going to have enough for a first down. Yeah, you could tell he wanted to hit Deedle there coming off of that motion into the flat. But that was good coverage by the Sanford outside linebacker. And then now he just kind of had to be a football player, read, react, end up getting the first down. So a first down for Shorter, just their second of this opening quarter. A minute 22 to go here in the first quarter as Cook pulls it back, throws the slant, has him in. Another first down. Devin Lewis, the junior from Jacksonville, has enough. Make it 11 yards. Yeah, single receiver dig right there off the play action. The turn, throw the hips, put it right there in the window, put it right on. That's a good throw and catch right there from Cook. And now you're starting to see a little momentum right there for the shorter offense. You want to be able to build on this. Any momentum going forward, you always want to generate it. Another play action fake for Cook on first down. Looking downfield this time, he's got his big tight end. John Tito leaps into the end zone for a shorter touchdown. And what a response for the Hawks. They had been searching for offensive momentum all quarter. They've got some through one of their best players. Yeah, and you see Ross, he slips right there on the out and up. He doesn't fully bite, but all he does is once you give him any sort of forward step and Deedle works back up on the sideline, pins himself, great throw and catch. 
And, again, that's a big, big drive for the shorter offense. If you're looking to get back into this ball game, you have to have explosive plays like that. Tyler Simpson's extra point is up, and it is good. And the Hawks offense with a much-needed response take advantage of their best field position of the opening quarter and cash it in. Four plays and 74 yards officially for the Hawks and some signs of life for the visitors over on that far side. And Damian Fitting, it's John Deedle with a first shorter touchdown. <laughs> he was a guy that Coach Morrison was very, very high on. You go back and watch his 2022 film, and you look and see that he is a very versatile guy. He can play the edge on the aisle, on the in the line scrimmage. He can go out and play receiver. His versatility, and he'll tell you, like, we're trying to find a way to get 87 the ball, and he did just that. And a guy that's, I mean, he's a big-sized guy, goes out and makes a play, high points it, and now you're looking at this offense. If that gives you any sort of confidence that this team is able to score, you definitely want to see what you can do when you put it in 87's hands. Tito, a preseason all-Gulf South Conference selection. He was tied in, two behind Kyle Morlock last year. Morlock transferred to Florida State. He'll be tied in one for the FSU-LSU game coming up this weekend. John Deedle takes his place, 6'6", 250-pounder, has the first touchdown of the year for the Hawks. The kickoff is low and handled on a couple of hops by D.J. Rias. And Rias makes a man miss. He's in the open field, makes another man miss across midfield. Rias down the sideline, still on his feet, but stepped out of bounds around the shorter 40. And if he doesn't have that heel hit the chalk <laughs> on the Sanford sideline, he's got a 99-yard touchdown. Absolutely, man. You want to talk about the three phases of the ball game. Just in week one, we've seen huge special teams plays. And right there, DJ Rice, a guy that's been playing for a while here at Sanford, if he doesn't put that foot, was he? It's close. Was that heel on the ground? Either way, it's an explosive play, and you have wonderful field position for the Sanford offense. It's the second excellent return of this opening quarter for Sanford. That's where Michael Hires and company start. Out to the flat, this is caught. Peyton Ringer across the 30, leapfrogs him in, out of bounds near the 25. A pickup of 14 on first down. And that's the thing about this offense, you definitely don't want to give them a short field to work with because now they are rolling. Just a few seconds left in this first quarter. Hires and company, a chance at a couple more snaps here. That's caught as well. And near the line to gain, that's E.J. Mason, the transfer from Northwest Mississippi Community College. And that'll be the final play of this opening quarter. Again, new rule in college football this year. Clock doesn't stop on first downs if the ball's in play. And so that brings our first 15 minutes to a close. Two touchdowns for Sanford, one for Shorter. But the Bulldogs are in the red zone when we come back for quarter number two right after this. How do we speed recovery for our patients? At Houston Methodist, we're improving surgical accuracy by mapping each patient's unique brain anatomy. We're also using advanced visualization technology for heart patients, allowing us to see better and heal you faster. That's the difference between practicing medicine and leading it. Houston Methodist, leading medicine. 180, 180. Hello, Patrick Mahomes. Who do you even play for? T-Mobile. T-Mobile has plans that make upgrades work for you. They even have a plan which makes you upgrade money every year. That's good play, Colin. Cheers. Take charge of your upgrades with our best Go 5G plans at T-Mobile. When you drive a Ram, summer is more than a season. It's an opportunity to load up on more toys, to stop looking for fun, and be the one who brings it, and to make every day even more inviting than the last. Make this the summer you drive America's best light duty pickup. During the Ram Labor Day sales event, get 4,000 retail consumer cash allowance on most 2023 Ram 1500 trucks. We all know it's a good idea to recycle. But what happens to that aluminum can or all that paper after you put it in the recycling bin? Where does it go? What does it become in its second life? 
see how WM is always working for a sustainable tomorrow at wm.com slash stories. Hello, welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order, please? What do you want? What do you want? Quarter pounder with cheese. Royal with cheese. I haven't had a Big Mac in a long time. How many filet of fishes did you eat? That's over several months, Ryan. In Puerto Rico, a McFlurry, it's called a Senor Flurry. Two golden menus. McDonald's. 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 They're McDonald's. I'm McDonald's. Are you gonna order something? Eat pretzels. Eat more pretzels. <laughs> Watch movies. Watch more movies. Get airline miles. Get one key cash. Book in app to earn one key cash on top of your airline miles. I used to watch the Heisman House every year on TV. And I'd always wonder, is it real? It's very real. Take a little bit more up the top. Now that I've been here a while, it's a lot like campus. We have roommates. Hey, Caleb, just try and keep it down. It's nap time. Of course, there's a gym. Ten. All right, people, here we go. Looking good, RG3. No, you're looking good, RG3. Yeah, so it's a lot we need like. Room, rookie. We're doing a ticky tock. Bound, 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 Just like bound. campus. Wait, wait. A quarter of the books of week one here in 2023. Shorter and Sanford kick things off from Bobby Bowden Field at Cybert Stadium on this Sanford campus. Two teams trying to take strides forward in 2023, starting with a shorter club that won three games a year ago. Picked to finish eighth in their final season in the Gulf South. Delta State, West Florida, the big favorites and one of the best, if not the best, conference in Division II college football. On the other side of things, the Sanford Bulldogs, one of the co-favorites in the league, picked to finish right behind the Furman Paladins. Two top 10 teams in the Southern Conference to start the year. Mercer also in the top 25, Chattanooga just on the fringes of it. What should be a fun Southern Conference race. Quarter number two underway, E.J. Mason, what a move after the catch inside the 10, still on his feet, finds the end zone. Touchdown, Sanford. <laughs> Talk about work after the catch. The junior college transfer has his first Sanford touchdown. And our, when our meetings, Hatch told us that there's so much depth in these receivers, in this receiver room, and that's another one that EJ, he comes in, makes, my, makes a man miss and just be an athlete, didn't want to get denied in a touchdown, and he got him one. And Sanford starts the second quarter with a bang. Michael hires his third touchdown pass of this opening half. Sanford's on the board, 21-7. There is a man down for the Hawks after that PAT. Someone on the defensive line. So timeout on the field. We'll step aside as well. We'll find out more on the injured Hawk when we come back. Sanford Cash is in. A good start to the second quarter. Bulldogs on top by 14 when we return. Helping your child stay active comes with hits and misses. Having Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama and access to the state's largest network of doctors for the whole family gives you peace of mind, no matter what path you choose. Because finding something that works for you and your family feels pretty great. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, we cover what matters. Coming to Samford University in 2024, the new Campus Recreation, Wellness, and Athletics Complex. These world-class facilities will provide opportunities to improve physical fitness and mental wellness, as well as new spaces for recreation, events, community gatherings, and new practice and training facilities for Samford's athletic teams. To learn more, visit samford.edu slash go slash recreation. 
Damaged gutters could mean trouble. If they're starting to pull away from the roof, leaking, or if you notice water pooling around the exterior, call Hinkle Roofing today to avoid more costly repairs later. Gutters? Hinkle does that too. Hinkle Roofing, your home exterior experts. Let's go guys, let's get this done. Everything we have into our jobs. Thanks, Daddy. Because this is our home, too. Welcome back to our coverage of college football here on ESPN from a gorgeous Birmingham, Alabama, the suburb of Homewood. 85 degrees at kickoff and has turned into a Picture perfect night to close out the month of August and start this college football season. So far, the Sanford students like what they see. Sanford on top 21 7. A couple of solid special teams plays setting up a lethal Sanford offense that's fouled the end zone three times already. Two for Chandler Smith, one for Mason. Michael Hires already with three passing touchdowns to his credit. The Hurt Hawk. By the way, it was Tony Bethea, but he got up under his own power, made his way to the sideline. He's good to go. Good sign for Shorter. And we're ready to restart things. Henry Bishop, the senior from South Carolina, to kick things off once more. Sends this one near the goal line. Taken by Thomas around the two. Thomas to his left. Runs over a man and gets to about the 23-yard line. That's where Shorter's offense will try to build on their first scoring drive of the day. Absolutely, and that's the thing. You want to keep this thing rolling. And, again, we talked during the break about Deedle, and, I mean, he just looks so natural, and you can tell that he is the playmaker for this offense. And you want to find a way to continue to put him in the best position and get him the ball. And now if you're Cook, you're kind of looking, okay, I've gotten, I've completed a few passes. You kind of start feeling a little bit of a rhythm. You want to continue to build up on that on this drive. Harold Cook officially 5 of 7 for 51 yards and that passing touchdown. Field position not as advantageous this time around as he gives on the end around to Marshall looking for a seam, not going to find one. It was closed down quickly by Johnny Johnson and Noah Martin. Try to stretch that out. The more time you try to stretch it out, you're giving more run, rush lanes for the linebackers. And, I mean, they were coming with reckless abandon. Whew. Met his teammates at the football. Noah Martin, one of the best tacklers in the Southern Conference, a preseason all-conference selection. Tonight, his 32nd straight start. He's played some football. He's got a tackle for loss there. Officially a loss of one as Cook rolls to his right, looking for options. Nice one-handed snag along the sideline by Durant. That was a nice play design because it started off, you're thinking it's a triple option. And it's almost like the tailback knew that, okay, if he's not going to gain any ground, I have to become almost that guy in the flat, almost a check down there in the short side of the field. Very, very unique. The thing about these offenses now in, in football, the offensive coordinators, they are creative. Officially goes as a gain of five. Dante Pollard was there to force him out of bounds. So it's third down and six for the Hawks. Trying to pick up their first third down conversion of the night. Empty backfield for Cook. Flush to his right. Martin in pursuit. And Cook just has to throw it away with not one but two flags down. One near the line of scrimmage and one in the secondary. Couldn't tell what happened in the backfield, but I think in the secondary might have been a hold on Deedle as he was trying to get across in the middle. I think they might have tugged on him just a tad bit. So we might have both offensive and defensive holding here. There are fouls by both teams. Holding, offense, number 71. Holding, defense, number three. Correction, number 33. Those fouls offset, replay, third down. So Jaden Mosley, the offending party for Sanford Allen Heron. The offensive lineman for shorter tagged for the hold. See that on the edge of your yeah, you screen there. Got a 
as hands all up on Nick Jackson with your defensive lineman. And that's the thing when you get these divisional matchups with an FCS school division two. It's really the trenches, and it's been kind of a kind of a hard thing for the shorter offensive line to continue con at a consistent basis of slowing down the pass rush, even when they're just rushing three. Tito made the grab, but Noah Martin made him pay for it. And that's going to be two yards shy of the line to gain. Brings up fourth down and two. And Shorter is going to be forced to punt the football away. Yeah, and you go back to the last drive. Again, you stack it up, and you have a chance to score a touchdown only because, you know, you had the, the penalty on the kickoff, put you in a good field position. And now you're starting to see, okay, we're not going to be able to move it from 20 to 20. We've got to be able to sustain some drives. And Sanford's defense is really starting to bow up and catch their rhythm and understand that they, they're, not as a, as they're not moving at a pace that is really, really pushing them. They're setting the tempo there defensively. Not a great punt there from Walters. Maybe 31, 32 yards officially to the Sanford 38-yard line. That's where Michael hires. The rest of this Sanford offense will start things when we return to Bobby Bowden Field in Cyber Stadium right after this. Hello, Patrick Mahomes. Wait, who do you even play for? T-Mobile. And I'm here to protect you from wireless companies that blitz you with phone deals that sack you with a three-year device contract. Even I can get sacked? Not at T-Mobile. They have plans that make upgrades work for you. They even have a plan which makes you upgrade ready every year. Thanks, man. Now can I do the thing? Do the thing. Excellent. Take charge of your upgrades with our best Go 5G plans at T-Mobile. Let's have a huddle. You don't know what huddle is, do you? No. And uh, last but not least, the wonderful crew at McDonald's. Hello, welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order, please? Are you gonna order something? Oh. How do we speed recovery for our patients? At Houston Methodist, we're improving surgical accuracy by mapping each patient's unique brain anatomy. We're also using advanced visualization technology for heart patients, allowing us to see better and heal you faster. That's the difference between practicing medicine and leading it. Houston Methodist, leading medicine. Become an auntie, book a flight, stay four nights, meet the baby, make the baby cry, give the baby back, fly home. Silver tear in a single trip, join one key, and move up tears fast. The U.S. Open continues through September 10th on ESPN. Well, the north side of things here at Bobby Bowden Field at Cybert Stadium. Plenty of construction going on. For more on that, the third member of our crew down below, Lyndon Blake. Lyndon? Yeah, a lot of construction. It doesn't look like much now. It's some cranes, some sturdy poles there. But come next fall, fall of 2024, this is going to be amazing. It's going to be Stanford's new campus recreation, wellness, and athletic complex. 165,000 square feet. This has a price tag of $65 million. This is the largest capital investment in the university's history. So people will be able to go exercise there, play there, and it's going to be awesome for the students. Also, I will throw in the field house is getting renovations too. So for this season, things will look a little bit different. If you're coming to the game, you cannot go from one stand to the other. You're kind of confined to what side you're on, but it's going to be worth it for 2024. Thanks, Lyndon. Ty King, another reception from Michael Hires, working in one-on-one -on -one coverage, <laughs> taking advantage of it. Let me tell you one thing about Michael Hires. There is a confidence in his arm that many quarterbacks don't have. He was on the opposite hash, and you had two outside guys running goals on both sides, and he looks at Ty King, and he knows it. Again, the fastest guy on the roster for the receivers. He just goes it up. He goes up makes a play. 
and now they continue to roll their execution at a high level for this Sanford offense. After another catch from King, Jay Stanton carries up the middle. Looks like he's going to have enough for a first down as the Bulldogs are back in the red zone again. And it is a first down officially from the 13-yard line. Hires quick to King, who's inside the 10 and gets down to about the 7 before he's brought down by Hunter Hodson, who's working with Trey Thomas. Hard to believe Ty King had just 20 catches last year. He's going to have a lot more than that here in 2023. <laughs> yeah, you replace Somebody had to find a way to replace those catches from Kendall Watson, senior last year playing the game. And another touchdown on the board. Another pass. Short route. Swing it onto your halfback. Receivers and linemen out there blocking on the edge. And Jay Stanton, for as long as the career he's had, adds another touchdown to the board. And simple. Again, they want to talk about receivers don't do anything. They call us divas, and look at that. Receivers out there blocking, chipping away. All he has to do is be an athlete, make a guy miss, and now he's dancing in the end zone. Extra point up and good. Make it four passing touchdowns for Michael Hires here in the first half. Two to Smith, one to Mason, and no one to his senior running back. Chase Stanton's got his first touchdown of the year. Sanford extending their lead. Still 11 minutes to go in this first half. Number nine team in the country. Certainly picking up right where they left off offensively from a year ago. Damaged gutters could mean trouble. If they're starting to pull away from the roof, leaking, or if you notice water pooling around the exterior, call Hinkle Roofing today to avoid more costly repairs later. Gutters? Hinkle does that too. Hinkle Roofing, your home exterior experts. Safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a TicketSmarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. Back here in Birmingham, Blake Gardner, Damian Mitchell, Lyndon Blake. Glad to have you with us tonight on ESPN+. Plus. Sanford's passing offense that was one of the best, if not the best, in FCS a year ago. Already 28 points on the board. 16 completions for Michael Hires across seven different receivers. Bulldogs lead is three touchdowns with 11 minutes to go here in the first half. Bulldogs set to kick it away again. Henry Bishop. Everyone, the go ahead. Two different returners back for shorter this time around. Not just Thomas. As Bishop sends it deep. Again, short of the goal line. It's taken around the three. By Josue Alexander. Make it Jalen Marshall, who's out across the 20 to the 23 yard line before he was hit hard. And again, more laundry on the field. We've had a few penalties here in this first half. Yeah, you're ironing out some kinks in week one. You're seeing a lot of penalties, a lot of holdings. Again, one of those things you got to get in the flow, got to get in the rhythm. Hopefully, later on down the road, you don't see as many. 
this early on. But again, week one, definitely got to iron those things. And the coaches will tell you, you want this game to be as clean as possible there is in week one. Again, you get adjusted to it, the speed of the game, the flow of the game. You're going against somebody that you don't know. You've been thudding up and doing everything during practice. And even the way that practice is now in college football, you don't really have much live action or taking people during to the, the ground. Hold. Receiving team. Number 33, 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. You have Olden right there. And I mean, continue. Now you're, again, for the shorter offense, you're putting yourself in harm's way by finding yourself in deep in your own territory and having to go the length of the football field against a defense that's really starting to gel and find their group. I don't think the hold was on number five. Jalen Marshall was the return man. Right. But nevertheless, it is a holding <laughs> penalty against shorter that backs them up inside their own 15 to start this drive. Harold Cook, the quarterback, gives inside. And not a whole lot of space in between the tackles for the Hawks' rushing attack so far tonight. That front seven for Sanford is really, really making it hard for the, the front line of Shorter because, again, there's no separation. And they're doing it with an odd front. They're doing it with a nose and two guys head up on the outside. And then really, really are starting to make their way. They're redirect, redirecting the line of scrimmage and really starting to shove them back. So these running lanes are very, very tight. Don't hit them quick, you won't get there. And then their secondary is doing a great job in coverage. Overall, just an overall great game plan for Coach Boone and that Sanford defense. Quick throw to the far side is caught. That's Bo Mosteller, the junior from Jackson, Georgia. He makes this a third and manageable here for the Hawks. And this is a big third down right here for both sides. Again, for shorter, if you want to create some sort of momentum on this one, you need to get a first down because, again, now you're making the punt a lot longer than it needs to be, and hopefully, and now you're flipping it around, and Sanford's defense wants to bow up right here and continue to give their offense a short field to work with. Bit of a bunch formation here on third and six. Cook looking left. It's knocked away, or was it caught? It was caught. Oh, Somehow wow. got through the traffic. The catch is made <laughs> for a big first down. The Hawks move the chains. Thanks to Cadrice Mobley, the sophomore from Clearwater. Man, what can I say? As a, as a receiver, the concentration that these guys are having, the focus through when you have distraction, those are the distraction drills really starting to pay off here in week one. Great, strong hands by these receivers. So a fresh set of downs for the Hawks. Another give. Justice Durant maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Noah Martin was there. Braden Royal around as well. You really want to see what they're doing as far as setting up a counter to the backside. Because this team, because the Sanford Bulldogs, they do slant a little, a good bit. You try to want to catch them a little bit slip, slipping and try to pin them down, work around on the outside. But you see the pursuit from a Noah Martin, from a Mosley, from a Cotton, and those linebackers, they're just roaming free and being able to boom, beeline right to the ball and creating short, short gains for these running, for the running game or shorter. Another give. Maybe a yard this time for this Hawks rushing attack. So far, good job on this series inside by Elijah Rollins, the transfer from Mississippi Valley State. One of the many new pieces breaking in on this Sanford defense here in 2023. That officially goes as a gain of one for Durant, so it's third down and nine for this shorter offense as we approach the eight minute mark, eight minutes to go here in this first half. Shorter one for five on third down so far tonight. Cook had time, now running out of it. Trying to escape, throws just a little bit short of Mosteller, who is hounded in coverage by the veteran Cortland Marsh. He had a lot of time right there, and he, but again, once you get to a point, your feet start talking to you. You got to look for your outlet, and I don't know if he really looked. He had three receiver side, but he was looking single receiver. Not really sure what he was looking for. To me, if you're shorter in the offense, if you're cool, I got to find a way to find 87. I got to find a way to give Dito the ball because he is the best playmaker that you have on the offensive side. So even if you got to, you know, force some things in some tight windows and just let him be an athlete, you got to look for your playmakers in situations like that. It's Kobe Stewart, by the way, that gets credit for the hurry and the hit as Chandler Smith calls for and makes a fair catch around the 36. And that's where Sanford's offense will take over once more when we come back. 
Sanford's offense already has four touchdowns on the board, a chance to make it five before we get to the first half break when we return to Bobby Bowden Field. Those new tiles are falling right into place until you run out of, what are those called again? Oh, right. The Home Depot app is made for doing that doesn't miss a beat. So you can find what you need fast and keep things moving in the right direction. For doing that doesn't stop, download the Home Depot app. It's made for doing. Behind every door at Houston Methodist, you know what to expect. Expertise. Whether it's life-saving brain surgery, your 3D mammogram that catches breast cancer sooner, or orthopedic specialists helping you feel stronger than ever. With hundreds of doors across Houston, you can get expert care everywhere. That's the difference between practicing medicine and leading it. Houston Methodist, leading medicine. How do plastic bottles turn into this? WM and Reprieve have given new life to over 20 billion plastic bottles. And we're just getting started. See how recycling is one of the many ways WM is always working for a sustainable tomorrow at WM.com slash stories. Become an auntie. Book a flight. Stay four nights. Meet the baby. Make the baby cry. Give the baby back. Fly home. Silver tier in a single trip. Join one key and move up tiers fast. BK Royal Crispy Wraps. Eat it with the meal or have it as a snack. Only $2.99. It's a hunger hack and it fits in one hand. And BK, have it your way. I don't know, that may be one of the best vantage points in the house up on the Sullivan Cooney Family Fieldhouse. All the hospitality up there this year here at Cybert Stadium as Michael Hires and this Sanford offense gets set to take over once again. Sanford on top 28 to seven with 7.45 to go here in this first half and Sanford wants to move quickly. Hires claps for the football and wants to take a shot. Chandler Smith hauls it in over the shoulder inside the 30. I mean, as a receiver, I mean, there's something magical when you just know you have the connection with your quarterback. They're clearing everything out, and Michael's just, I mean, he's on point with it. Just a beautiful ball. Really, the only place where Chandler could catch it, hits him right in stride, makes a big play. This offense is going to be explosive again. They haven't missed a beat since last year, and they're coming out the gate very, very strong here in 2023. DJ Rias, his fifth catch as well, picks up five on first down as Sanford continues to operate with tempo. Out to the flat, that was almost dropped, but Thomas D'Armand, the sophomore from Baton Rouge, hung on. It looks like he's got enough to move the chains once again. And again, the, the pace, the tempo of this offense. Again, when we look, when we talked to Coach Hatcher and he told us about Michael as being in full control of this offense, it's almost like he knows exactly wherever the ball is going to be, the next play that's going to be called and he's just so comfortable in everything. And now this offense is really, really starting to smell blood in the water, and they're empty in the clip right now. Jay Stanton picked up a good chunk on first down, and now a man down. Looks like Cut four off. shorter. That's Hunter Hodson, the senior safety from Chickamauga, Georgia, just outside Chattanooga, who needs some medical attention. Gives us a chance to go down to the third member of our crew, Lyndon Blake, and Lyndon, Michael Hires and Chris Hatcher talking down below us right now. Those two guys quite a bit in common for what they were able to accomplish in their college careers. Oh, for sure. And, and that's what's cool is Hatcher's mentorship to Hires, especially coming up their last season. Hires is on all the preseason watch list. And when asking Hatcher how is he keeping his quarterback focused, keeping him level-headed going to the season, Hatcher's like, I have this experience. I played in his shoes before. I had all the hype going into the 1993 season. Coach Hatcher was the favorite to win the Harlan Hill Trophy that year, 30 years ago. That is the D2 Hasman. Well, he got off to a slow start. He came in fourth that season, but he said he took that and turned it into a Harlan Hill Trophy winner in 94. 
And Chase Stanton's got his second touchdown of the game. Touchdown Bulldogs, this offense continues to roll up points here in the first half. Got to give credit to the offensive line too. They are really starting to gel well, just a zone. And as a running back, all you need to see is that little piece of green grass, put your foot in the ground, get north and south, and just become an athlete in the open field. Another touchdown for Jay Stanton. Another one in his illustrious career here at Sanford. Extra point from Beaver Stock is good. Sanford continues to pile on here in quarter number two on top 35 to seven. Jay Stanton's got a two touchdown night. T and Chandler Smith, the members of that club right now. And, and Damian, the, good, yeah. the good thing about this offense is they're not settling for field goals once they get in the red zone. They're scoring touchdowns, and that, that's one thing that Coach Hatcher, outside that one fumble early on in the game, every time they've been in the red zone, they've been able to score touchdowns, and that's something, in the, especially early on, that you want to see from your offense, that they're executing from 20 to 20 and also in pay dirt. And again, just inside zone, shorter not doing a good job of wrapping up. Jay Stanton. Walks in for another touchdown. Got a chance to show off his strength, too. Jasim Henry, a defensive lineman, was on his ankles, spun him off. Was able to get to the end zone for the second time tonight. Sanford on top, 35-7. That's 240 yards of offense for the Bulldogs here in the first half, even with a minus 23 to end their first drive. We'll Believe talk about executing all cylinders in week one. Almost eight yards a play for this Stanford attack through the first 25 plus minutes. Bishop sends it deep once again. And Marshall takes it around the five on a hop after it hit his fingers. Made one man miss in a second and is out across the 25 to the 27. <laughs> There's a big block right there on the kickoff return. You don't see too many of that, but. Midnight Stewart, I know he's probably going to feel that when he popped right back up. But it was a hard hit. And down right now is a man for shorter, Kadris Mobley. He's down on his right side at the moment. And if you're Coach Morrison, listen, you, you, you're looking at the scoreboard, you can't score 28 points on one touchdown. You're not going to get it on one play. If anything, you want to just continue to build, find a first down here, first down there, and try to work your way towards the end zone. Even if it's just a field goal, you end something with points. It's probably what you're preaching to your team right now. We're not going to get everything back on one play, one snap, but just continue to build up on play up after play and just continue to find some sort of way to put the ball in the end zone or get a field goal. Just the one scoring drive so far tonight for the Hawks. Passing attack's been okay. Cook's thrown for 71 yards. Just haven't found anything on the ground against this Sanford front. 11 rushing attempts for the Hawks here in the first half. Just three total yards. Right now, both training staffs for both Sanford and Shorter right now. Looking at the Hawks' young wide receiver who remains down around the 27-yard line. Yeah, and this is a party game you never want to see. You know, injuries, I know they're part of it, but, I mean, no matter what jersey you are, no matter where you, who you are on this, on this field, you never want to see somebody go down, never want to have the medical attention come out. So we're going to step away as medical attention continues to be received by Mr. Mobley, and hopefully we'll have an update for you on the other side of this break. 6.22 to go here in the first half. The Sanford on top is shorter, 35-7. Advance your career with an MBA from Sanford University's Brock School of Business. Nationally ranked by Fortune, our Master of Business Administration program develops ethical business leaders for a modern and competitive workforce. It's flexible for the working professional and customizable. Choose from concentrations in data analytics, finance, and sports business. Learn more or apply at samford.edu slash go slash MBA. Let's go! He, go! Go! All the way! 
At Ingalls, we're proud to partner with area athletics from little league to the pros, college tournaments to high school heroes. It's all in the bag. You ready? Hold on, let me check the score. Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. A girl? Daddy's girl. Gonna get that girl a pony. A drum set and braces. Quinceanera. A car? Dream college? Destination wedding? Are we gonna be okay? Ah, Regions. It's a girl! 87% of people think about money all the time. Regions makes it easier to get back to the moment. Matchup, me versus an ugly fender bender. If I can eke out a win, it's gonna be a miracle, baby. Uh, Mr. Vitale, it wouldn't be a miracle because Geico gives you a team of experts to help manage your claim. It's gonna be a nail biter. No, the Geico team is there for you 24 7. Geico is awesome, baby. Oh, oh. Too much? I think we got it. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Geico, great service without all the drama. Funny how your car has a way of reminding you it's time for an oil change. Luckily for you, it'll only take 10 minutes. At Express Oil Change and Tire Engineers, not only do you get your oil changed quickly, we take care of all your vehicle needs, from headlights to taillights and everything in between. Respect and courtesy are always part of the deal, and you'll drive away with the confidence and peace of mind you want and deserve. For friendly, trustworthy service, come to Express Oil Change and Tire Engineers. We take care of your car and your stress. Take a look at your home's exterior. Do you see any chips or cracks? Does it look worn or need repair? Call Hinkle Roofing now to avoid more costly problems later. Siding? Hinkle does that, too. Hinkle Roofing, your home exterior experts. Get great seats. Safer, simpler, and smarter with TicketSmart. Choose great seats from over 125,000 live events, all backed with a TicketSmarter 100% ticket guarantee. Get your tickets smarter at TicketSmarter.com. Better ingredients, better pizza, better brace yourself, because Papa John's has done it again. Introducing Papa Bowls. No crust, just a whole bunch of those Papa John's toppings you love. Baked to piping hot perfection. I'm talking crisp veggies, savory meats all covered in melty cheese, and those signature sauces. Try flavors like Italian Meats Trio, Chicken Alfredo, and Garden Veggie. Or get creative and build your own. Papa John's. Therese Mobley being helped off the field here. Bobby Bowden Field at Cybert Stadium as we welcome you back. Lyndon Blake, our sideline reporter down below, was closest to it. Lyndon, it unfortunately, did not look good for the young wide receiver. No, it didn't. I can tell you they were seen putting this black boot on his right ankle there, trying to stabilize it. Before we came back, he had to be lifted off the field to put onto the cart. He couldn't even put weight there on that that left leg, the one that was good. He was screaming in pain as that play was drawing to a close. You can tell the sophomore just in a lot of pain. He did give you know the wave to the shorter crowd. So hopefully we'll find out some more information on that right ankle and see what we can do. I can tell you only shorter's head trainer can give me that information. Her name's Anna, and she was seen on the cart, but I'll try to find out so I can keep all of us updated. Thanks, Lyndon. First and 10 starts with a big hit from Thomas Neville. Make sure that pass was broken up. Man. That's one of the things about coming back from injuries, timeouts. It's, I mean, the game continues to roll on. Prayers for him and his recovery. I know you hate to see that week one, but again, like this, the Sanford defense has been lights out to start the game. You give up that one big play to Deedle there on that wheel route because of a slippage, and now they're really, really starting to make way. Play action to Holland. The throw out to the wide side of the field is caught by McGill, and positive yardage for Brandon McGill. 
Special teams freshman of the year last year for Shorter, featuring more as a pass catcher this year. He picks up eight to make it third and short. Yeah, you get your playmakers out in space. They were able to hit the bubble right there on the wide side of the field. Again, making it third and manageable. But one thing about the Sanford defense, they've been really bowing up in these situations. Even in the short third yardage situation, they haven't been able to complete many. So now you find yourself in third and manageable. You want to, you definitely want to find a way to get a first down right here for short. Harold Cook, the junior from Tampa, Florida, gets the snap on third and short, gives to Noah Holland, who's wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. JoJo Cotton was nearby, and it's a loss of one to bring up fourth down. Yeah, I mean, you look at Josiah Cotton just really just splitting through there, causing a whole bunch of commotion in the backfield. If you as a running back can't get any forward momentum right after the handoff, it makes it almost impossible to go out and make something out of nothing. And again, Sanford defense, they're third and short. And Coach Boone, he made an emphasis on it. You stop them on first and third downs. Now you find yourself in a situation like this where you only have, you know, seven points on the board for the shorter offense. Fourth tackle for loss tonight by the Sanford defense. Forces another shorter punt, and it's a wobbly short kick. The Chandler Smith fields successfully at the 39. So again, Sanford's offense with good field position. Perhaps a chance to score one more touchdown before the half comes to a close. Officially a 27-yard punt there from Wyatt Walters. And the one thing you don't want to do is continue to give this Sanford offense a short field to work with. And again, outside of that one turn, well, almost turnover, the Sanford offense has just been rolling. Michael Hires has missed just three times tonight. 19 for 22 throwing the football. He's throwing again on first down and looking deep. Down the seam, it is just a little bit underthrown looking for R.J. Starkey. And Starkey, a guy that, you know, the coaches were very high on being able to play the inside guy. And even if he needed to step in and be a tight end in 12 personnel, he also could step in there. And that's just a ball again. As a wide out, you want to be able to control your body, slow it up and high pointed when it is behind you. But Michael had the right idea, give your playmaker a chance one-on-one -on -one over the top. Just got to come up and com complete that pass right there. Good coverage by Artelius Edmonds, the sophomore from Columbus, Georgia. He's one of the best freshmen on the team for shorter a year ago. Unfortunately for the Hawks, another man is down injured this time along the defensive line. Again, this is just part of the game you never want to see. And if you're Coach Morrison, man, you just really want to get it to halftime, regroup, refocus. Again, you can't play catch up right now. You can't score in one snap. You can't create a 28-point score. But now it's just can we get to halftime because, again, these bodies are starting to drop a little bit. And you hate to see this part of the game. That's Jacob Moore, the sophomore from Forsyth, Georgia, who's being helped to the shorter sideline. Backup defensive tackle. Hopefully he's all right. But Shorter's had a few of those injuries here in this first half. On second down and 10, Shorter brings the house. It's picked up fairly well by the offensive line. Hires rolling out, looking long for Ismail, who makes the catch at the 15. That's the risk you run when you send that much pressure. You are leaving your defensive backs on islands with receivers. And this Sanford offense is already back up and rolling. Ismail, another catch and dives forward close to the 10. Another pickup of about four. <laughs> and they call Q, the transfer from Villanova, getting involved on this series. Absolutely. And Michael, I mean, he heaves it up. And, and, and again, his playmakers are going out and making plays. And this explosive Sanford offense is really, really clicking here in week one. Smith diving for the pylon. Did he get there? He lost the football on his way to the ground, and he was just a little bit short. Going to be rolled down at the one. It's going to be first and goal Sanford from there, and they are quick to get on the football. Chandler Smith just inches away from his third touchdown of the night. Instead, it's Witherspoon who punches it in. Touchdown, Bulldogs. And Demonte Witherspoon's got his first Sanford TD. And that's the thing about the Sanford offense. All it takes is one first down and the momentum starts rolling. You got that big play 
chunk play to get you down in the red zone, and two plays later you find a way to put it in the end zone. This offense is really clicking here to start off the, the new football season here in 2023. Beaver Sox PAT is true. And Sanford continues to extend the lead, 42-7. Bulldogs in front of the Hawks. And Damian, outside of that big negative play on drive number one, it's been smooth sailing for the Sanford offense. It has indeed. And I mean, you go even if you go back to that first drive, outside of that first drop, I mean, pretty much Michael Hires was starting off perfect. Um, and, and now you're just seeing this offense really, really start to flow. And again, if you're shorter, at this point, you're continuing just to chip away, chip away. And you hate to see these bodies dropping, but right now you have to find some sort of momentum again. You came into the game kind of overmatched. You're matching up a number nine, a number nine team, FCS, in Sanford. And now you're just trying to find little victories in order to pile on and we look forward towards weeks in and week out in the Gulf South, Gulf South Conference. Still 3.30 left in this first half. Henry Bishop will kick it off one more time at least. But it has been a flurry of offense from Sanford here in this second quarter. 28 points in this second stanza alone. We've still got three and a half minutes left in it. Henry Bishop sends it away. A low line drive kick that is going to reach the end zone. And Marshall is going to bring it out. Across the 15, he'll be halted right there. Nowhere to go. Good coverage that time from Sanford Special Teams. And again, less than ideal field position for Harold Cook in this shorter offense. And now you look at the Sanford defense. They're starting to go two and two. They're too deep now. You're starting to see some guys switch up on the defensive line and some of the back half of the skill position as well, defensive backfield. And now for Shorty, you just want to create something. You want to find a first down here. You want to create some sort of, you know, mismatch. Maybe you can take advantage of it right here, but you want to find a way to put at least three points on the board to give yourself some sort of confidence going into halftime. On first and 10, throw to the flats. And Justice Durant, who cuts it up, trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. Don't think he made it there. Kai Gilbert, a sophomore from Phoenix City, was in pursuit. And officially a loss of a couple. And I will say this Sanford defense has come out strong. These, these, if this is what it's going to look like week in and week out, a lot of pursuit. You see the anchor and Noah Martin there in the middle linebacker really been running sideline to sideline. And Jaden Mosley, a guy that they were high on. I mean, they've been making plays all game long. Second and long, Cook has time, sits in the pocket, now tries to escape and can't get out of the pocket. Sacked again, Jamal Thompson dragged down Cook. Harold Cook a bit slow to get up. And again, they're just rushing three, and um, I mean, they're getting upfield, they're penetrating just with three, and you have five linemen, I mean, it makes it difficult for a quarterback to really, really step up and try to make a throw again in the backside and the coverage of everything. When you're getting pressured and your pocket is squeezing on you just with three, makes it a tough, tough task for the quarterback and you're trying to make something out of nothing. So shorter going backwards on this series. Two negative plays, brings up third down and officially 14. Cook sets up the screen. And Sanford snuffs it out in short order. Jaden Mosley in on the stop once again, along with Wade White. And the Hawks go three and out. Again, you pent up it back in your own territory deep. And again, Jaden Mosley there making this another play for the Sanford defense. And for shorter, this three and outs are really starting to pile on. And you're really starting to feel it's almost a snowball effect. You're having injuries and things like that. And you just don't seem like you could find any sort of leeway or any sort of bright spot. And it makes it feel like you're just being overwhelmed there offensively, not being able to put up any points. So the Hawks forced to punt it away again with a little more than a minute left in this first half. Chandler Smith, no fair catch this time. Around midfield, Smith puts his head down and gets across the shorter 35. Another short field for this Sanford offense to work with, with a minute nine to go in this second quarter. 
Another short field here for Sanford. All three of their timeouts, a minute and nine left. I think if anything, Coach Hatcher wants to look at this offense and make sure they execute and try to put some more points right here before half. The situational football. So a minute nine to go. All three timeouts for the Bulldogs if they need them. Hires underneath off the hands of Ty King. That's one as a receiver. You, you're going to beat yourself up, up on film. Quick little sit hitch route. Hits your hands. Got to be able to catch that. On second down and 10, Witherspoon gets a touch. Breaks the tackle inside the 30. Skips out of bounds around the 28. So give Witherspoon about seven yards. Third down and short. Sanford already on the football. Hires, claps for it. Witherspoon, another give. And he's got the first down inside the 25. That was a nice cut right there in the hole. We got to give a lot of credit to this Sanford offensive line. They have to be in a different type of shape to line up on the football and as fast as this offense really, really wants to go. And they've been a good job of keeping, you know, the players upright in the backfield and executing their, their, their assignments. Good hustle from R.J. Stark. He somehow kept his feet, kept in bounds, worked himself all the way inside the 10 to the 8, a pickup of 15 for the pin transfer. And Stark, he's a nice, he's a nice size fella standing there, 6'1", 220, and versatile enough to stop, you know, to be up in the box if he needs to, but also being able to be a reliable pass catcher when he's split out, flex in the tight end position. Hires with time underneath. King makes the catch inside the five. He's wrestled down there. Clock continues to move, 30 seconds to go. Sanford won't take a timeout. They'll just line up quickly. Second and goal. Hires gives. Witherspoon makes a man miss. Dives forward to about the two, and now Sanford will use one of those timeouts. I will say one thing, and, and Coach Hatcher even talked about Witherspoon getting some reps back there with Jay Stanton in the backfield, but he has very, very Sanford. quick feet. He's very, very sound, and the jump cuts that he's making, they're, they're very strategic. He's kind of just read and react, kind of hits it right there, reads it, just gets what he can. Tell you what, there's student plenty of experience, even if it wasn't at Sanford. The junior spent three seasons at Murray State, 27 games with the Racers. Was their leading rusher a year ago, even though he dealt with an ankle injury that he suffered right at the outset, played through it most of the year. Sanford hoping he and Jay Stanton can force or form, I should say, a two-headed monster in the Sanford backfield. Yeah, when you look at this Sanford, you know, it's too deep. It's a lot of grad transfers. You see a lot of transfers. You see a lot of seniors, juniors. It's a very veteran-led team, and you could tell that they know what the expectation is day in and day out while they were in fall camp. And Hatcher, he even talked about it that, you know, this is, this is a different type of group and very older group. And there goes Witherspoon again. Devontae Witherspoon makes it a two-touchdown night, and the Bulldogs find Painter one more time in this first half. I think that was just straight jump cut the entire time. There's one, two, jump back into it, back for another one, three, right there in the span of two yards. And again, it's all about will and determination and just trying to get in, find a way to get into the end zone. And that's something Sanford has done, drive in and drive out in this game. Extra point is good. And again, Sanford's offense takes advantage of excellent field position. Bulldogs offense, one of the best in the country a year ago, has almost half a hundred here in the first half to open up 2023. 49-7, Sanford in front with 12 seconds to go here in the first half. That might be the last time we see that first team Sanford offense tonight. They've done the job tonight, Damian. Absolutely, they've come out and again, when you have opponents like these, you kind of knowing that they're not at the same level. At least they shouldn't be at the same level if you play like you're supposed to. And that's what Sanford really is doing right here, really in the first half. They're coming out the gate swinging, executing at a high level. And the execution of this offense, man, like we talk about the speed of the game and how much, you know, how these different clock rules are going to affect. This hasn't stopped anything for Sanford. Again, the high power offense in 2022 has done nothing but reload. And again, when you have a guy, Michael Hires, who knows the system, is comfortable in it, the leader, he knows what to expect game in and game out, play in and play out what they want, you have results like these. So with 12 seconds left in the first half, Bishop 
tees it up one more time. Sends it deep end over end towards the four. Marshall makes a clean catch this time around. Trying to stretch the return across the 20. Him get to about the 20, and that's about all. It's been tough sledding on special teams for shorter tonight. Some spots Sanford has had a particularly large edge. Jalen Marshall lost his footing and looks like lost a shoe as well. Nice. If you're the Hawks here, you're probably taking this to the locker room. Yeah, probably just lining up, victory formation, take a knee, get in, discuss where they can make some sort of adjustments and just come out again. It's 0-0 zero, zero once you start the second half. Everything that happens in the first, you wipe it away, do what you can, and just come out and try to create some sort of generation, some sort of momentum to generate in the second half and try to rewrite, you know, a, a whole different half. 30 minutes in the books from Bobby Bowden Field at Cybert Stadium. First 30 minutes certainly belong to the home team. Sanford in front of Shorter, 49-7 at the break. Plenty of smiles in the Sanford crowd down below us. As the Bulldogs have taken care of business so far in their season opener. Lyndon Blake is downstairs with Sanford head coach Chris Hatcher. Hey, Coach, despite that setback on the first drive, offense looking fantastic in the first half. What did you see out of their balanced attack? Well, you know, it, it, the, the score looks good. I don't think we're executing very good. We're missing too many blocks. We're not playing crisp um, um, all the way across the board. I'm not complaining about the, the outcome of the drives, but, um, you know, I don't, I don't think we're executing like we need to. We're making some plays on the perimeter um, with, our, with some of those good athletes defensively, um, you know, other than the one – mishap there after the penalty um you know that we've been just suffocating them and then i think our special teams has been pretty solid but um you know we we get just need to execute better on offense within the offense of um the, the the game plan that we had coming in you just touched on it but you said you had a lot of younger guys on defense during this camp and they were gelling well together you said they've been suffocating in the first half how do you think they were able to come out here being younger guys and executing game one well i think first of all we, we've kept it very simple over there to let those guys go play and kind of see what we got you know again going into the first game with so many new faces you're not sure um, you know what type of team you're going to put on the field and so we've kept it simple let them play fast um, not only physically but mentally and I think that's been the um, reason for the good show in here in the first half all right thanks coach thank you very much thanks Lyndon thanks to Sanford head coach Chris Hatcher his Bulldogs on top big at the break here in Birmingham We'll take a time out. More from our coverage of week one of this 2023 college football season when we return. Behind every door at Houston Methodist, you know what to expect. Expertise. Whether it's life-saving brain surgery, your 3D mammogram that catches breast cancer sooner, or orthopedic specialists helping you feel stronger than ever. With hundreds of doors across Houston, you can get expert care everywhere. That's the difference between practicing medicine and leading it. Houston Methodist, leading medicine. 180, 180. Hello, Patrick Mahomes. Who do you even play for? T-Mobile. T-Mobile has plans that make upgrades work for you. They even have a plan which makes you upgrade ready every year. That's good play, Colin. Cheers. Take charge of your upgrades with our best Go 5G plans at T-Mobile. Book a work trip, earn one key cash, shake some hands. Do not forget to laugh. Book a getaway from work trip. Use one key cash, order some sides. Do not disturb. Join one key to earn and use rewards across Expedia, Hotels.com, and Verbo. Hello, welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order, please? What do you want? What do you want? Quarter pounder with cheese. Royal with cheese. I haven't had a Big Mac in a long time. How many filet of fishes did you eat? That's over several months, Ryan. In Puerto Rico, a McFlurry, it's called a Senor Flurry. Two golden menus. McDonald's. 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 They're McDonald's. I'm McDonald's. Are you going to order something? On season six of Fansville by Dr. Pepper, things are heating up. Mom, Dad. I have a girlfriend, and she likes college football. The stars have arrived. I've made my choice. This season, I will be drinking Dr. Pepper, strawberries, and cream. And everyone 
wants a taste of fame. Welcome back to Chuck's Take, because every fan needs a podcast. To get a thick color, I use two coats of maroon. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. I love your nails. Thank you. We all know it's a good idea to recycle. But what happens to that aluminum can or all that paper after you put it in the recycling bin? Where does it go? What does it become in its second life? See how WM is always working for a sustainable tomorrow at wm.com slash stories. When you drive a Ram, summer is more than a season. It's an opportunity to load up on more toys, to stop looking for fun and be the one who brings it and to make every day even more inviting than the last. Make this the summer you drive America's best light duty pickup. During the Ram Labor Day sales event, get 4,000 retail consumer cash allowance on most 2023 Ram 1500 trucks. I used to watch the Heisman House every year on TV. And I'd always wonder, is it real? It's very real. Take a little bit more up the top. Now that I've been here a while, it's a lot like campus. We have roommates. Hey, Caleb, just try and keep it down. It's nap time. Of course there's a gym. Ten. All right, people, here we go. Looking good, RG3. No, you're looking good, RG3. Yeah, so it's a lot like... You need like... a We're doing a ticky tock. Bam, bam. Just like bam. campus. Wait, wait. Well, back here at Robbie Bowden Field at Cybert Stadium. Homewood Community Night on this Thursday. Some the Homewood Youth Football Program getting some reps in under the lights here at halftime. See if anybody can find the end zone in this game because there were plenty <laughs> of touchdowns in the first half that we saw right here. As Chandler Smith, an excellent putt return, set up Sanford's first score of the night. Absolutely, man. You want to talk about a playmaker anytime he touched the ball. The first two touchdowns of the game went to number five and the connection that him and Michael Hires have. It was on full display there in the first half. And really, Michael Hires' whole arsenal was on display. And there that you see the only touchdown that Shorter was able to score Deedle on the wheel route with a slippage by Ross there and left him open. And it just seems like Sanford has just been clicking on all cylinders. Anything they've been wanting to do, you negate that one big play, that one big fumble. The offense has looked flawless. Defense has been swarming at every level. And I understand Coach is not, you know, fully happy with the way his offense executes, but the results have been there. Four touchdowns through the air, three touchdowns on the ground for the Sanford offense in that first half. 306 yards passing, and Michael Heyer spread the wealth as well. 24 completions to 10 different receivers. Yeah, and that's the thing about this air raid system. These guys, they play unselfishly. You just know that eventually the ball's going to be in your hands. And if there's anything that Michael Hires has done, has taken full confidence and full control in this thing, and you know exactly where to go with the football. Shorter with 78 total yards of offense through the first half, trying to find a little bit more than that. We come back for the second half. At halftime here at Cybert Stadium, Sanford on top 49-7 and the 2023 college football season opener. Those new tiles are falling right into place until you run out of, what are those called again? Oh, right. The Home Depot app is made for doing that doesn't miss a beat. So you can find what you need fast and keep things moving in the right direction. For doing that doesn't stop, download the Home Depot app. It's made for doing. 180, 180. Hello, Patrick Mahomes. Who do you even play for? T-Mobile. T-Mobile has plans that make upgrades work for you. They even have a plan which makes you upgrade ready every year. That's good play, Colin. Cheers. Take charge of your upgrades with our best Go 5G plans at T-Mobile. How do we speed recovery for our patients? At Houston Methodist, we're improving surgical accuracy by mapping each patient's unique brain anatomy. We're also using advanced visualization technology for heart patients, allowing us to see better and heal you faster. 
That's the difference between practicing medicine and leading it. Houston Methodist, leading medicine. BK Royal Crispy Wraps. Eat it with the meal or have it as a snack. Only $2.99. It's a hunger hack and it fits in one hand. And BK, have it your way. On season six of Fansville, it's the last year of college football as we know it. What's going on? The road to the playoff is expanding. To 12 lanes. Rivalries are crumbling. Why are you leaving? TV revenue. We wouldn't understand. So we're just not rivals anymore? Tensions are rising. Where's the flag? These refs should be criminally investigated. Do something! Because this season, things are heating up. What's happening, Sheriff? It's a transfer portal. It's out of control. Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. Eat pretzels. Eat more pretzels. <laughs> Watch movies. Watch more movies. Get airline miles. Get one key cash. Book in-app to earn one key cash on top of your airline miles. When you drive a Ram, summer is more than a season. It's an opportunity to get more in before the sun goes down. Make this the summer. You drive America's best light-duty pickup. Oh, man, the way Bryce is able to cover the whole field is incredible. Yeah, he's really spreading it around. You guys could help, you know. Just doing our jobs, Bryce. Just doing our jobs. Yeah, we're working too. You know, I'm just feeling a lot of pressure. There's big shoes to fill. It's your time now, Tommy. I know you'll keep it special like your dad did. If we can keep this business growing, I think that's the best way to honor him. Well, I was there for him, and I'll be there for you. About this new location? He would have loved it, Tommy. Let's find a way. Enjoy your meal. Thanks, you too. Question, how do you recover from an awkward exchange? Uh, hey, don't forget to set your lineup tonight. ESPN Fantasy Football. Thank you. With the 102nd season of Southern Conference football underway, pleasure to welcome you to SoCon Football Weekly, where each week we will provide recaps, schedules, and national rankings to keep you up to speed on all the action occurring on SoCon Saturdays. Defense grabbed the headlines in nationally ranked Mercer's season opening victory against North Alabama. Micah Bell with a three yard touchdown run early in the fourth quarter provided the key offensive moment. As for the third consecutive year, the Macon crew snatched the season opener away, the final in this one 17-7. As the Bears notched the league's first win of the new campaign at the FCS kickoff classic in Montgomery, Alabama. It was Mercer's first ever meeting with the North Alabama Lions, and a game that was tied 7-7 at the end of the first period saw Mercer scored 10 unanswered down the stretch to set the final. The remaining eight Southern Conference squads open play this coming weekend, Sanford and Furman playing in Thursday contests, the Bulldogs hosting Shorter, while the Paladins host Tennessee Tech, ETSU, Wofford, Western Carolina, Chattanooga, and the Citadel all open on the road in these contests while VMI hosts Davidson for the league's long home contest. On the Saturday slate, Mercer is back in action, taking that 1-0 record for a spin in SEC territory, taking on Ole Miss at 2 p.m., a game that can be viewed on the ESPN family of networks. A glance at the preseason rankings reveal four Southern Conference teams garnering national attention. Furman ranked highest amongst those at sixth in the country. Sanford tucked just inside the top 10 as well alongside Mercer, and a Chattanooga squad receiving votes in both national polls. That's your maiden voyage around the Southern Conference for 2023. This has been SoCon Football Weekly. The Southern Conference is more than just outstanding athletics. We highly value student academic achievement and staff development. The Southern Conference Academic Exchange Program 
uniquely engages students, faculty, and campus administrators through its annual undergraduate research forum, entrepreneurship challenge event, faculty staff awards, and leadership assistance. The Southern Conference, building champions on the athletic field and on our campuses. Older damaged windows could be costing you money, but Hinkle Roofing can help. Our high-quality replacement windows can help reduce energy costs, offer better security, and increase your home's value. Windows? Hinkle does that, too. Hinkle Roofing, your home exterior experts. One more. One more, please. One more, guys. One more. Set up. One more. One more. Hey, kid. Yeah, we'll take one more. Oh, oh. one more. What? Holston Gases is proud to announce we are the official gas supplier to the Southern Conference. Since 1921, the Southern Conference has been developing student athletes to produce lifelong leaders and role models. Holston Gases is in or near seven of the Southern Conference cities and is proud to partner with the Southern Conference to continue the excellence of producing lifelong leaders and role models. Look for the Holston Gases Green Diamond logo in your area. Holston Gases delivering industrial, medical, propane, and CO2 gases along with welding and safety supplies. At Ingalls, our greatest joy comes when we can play some small part in helping the communities we call home. And really, it's all thanks to you. From tools for schools to hurricane relief to toys at Christmas time, we've done it together. And this time, you've done it again. Thanks for your kindness at the cash register, your smiles across the aisles, and your can-do spirit. Ingalls, we're with you every step of the way.
Back here live at Bobby Bowden Field at Cybert Stadium. Second half coming your way here in just a few moments. Sanford on top of Shorter, 49 to seven. As we get ready to start quarter number three. Blake Gardner, Damian Mitchell, Lyndon Blake, your crew here on week one in Birmingham. And Lyndon, you had a chance to catch up with Sorter head coach Zach Morrison before we get this third quarter started. What was the message to his team? Yeah, Blake, first and foremost, I wanted to ask Coach Morrison about Mobley, their sophomore receiver, who did give me an update, said that it is a fractured right ankle. It was dislocated as well. We saw him get carted off the field in the first half, so he won't be coming back. On the field play, he said his guys are just not tackling. He said Sanford's defense is absolutely able just to dominate the Hawks' offense. And what he wants his team to do in the second half, he says he wants his team to fight and finish. If they can win the second half, he will call this a victory for his Hawks. Thanks, Lyndon. Fortunate news for Mr. Mobley. Hopefully he's able to make a full recovery his shorter Hawk teammates get set to kick things off and start this quarter number three. It's exactly what you don't want to see. Don't want to see injuries, especially in the very beginning of this campaign. Right, man, like to, especially in week one, to start it off and to have a horrific injury like that, man, wish him nothing but the best. But again, for shorter, and that's kind of the mindset you got to have. You just got to take it clean. The first half is over with, second half from here on out. Is just building towards the next game and seeing where you can find some 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 bright spots in a pretty grim situation. Ty King takes the second half kickoff and has a lane across the 25 and taken down around the 31, maybe the 32 yard line by the kicker. <laughs> what a hit from Tyler Simpson. <laughs> right, like the hustle from the kicker to make an open field angle tackle on a pretty good athlete in Ty King. I I'm impressed. <laughs> I mean, look at the form here. Right. I mean, throws the hips, wraps up, and like Lyndon just said, you know, the coach just talked about tackling, and who thought you were getting some good form tackling from your kicker? He heard that. Absolutely. Kicks it off. He covers his own kick. Sanford starts their first drive of the second half for their own 32. Michael Heyer still in the game. Play fakes to Witherspoon and finds a receiver short. That's R.J. Starkey who gets about nine yards on first down. And again, you see the tempo already starting back up. Next, as soon as you complete that short nine-yard route, boom, they lined up, getting ready for the next play. Hires does give this time. Witherspoon a big hole over the right side across the 45 to the 47. That's six yards and a Sanford first down. That's a good way to press it there by Witherspoon. Sees it, zone attack, finds a crease, get in there, find green grass, get north and south. Hunter Hodson back in the game for shorter, made the stop as Hires delivers over the middle and behind Peyton Ringer. See where he's looking for right there, just got to give him a better ball. He was open right there, clear it out. He had to go and a back and an out on this short side and clearing under Sam over Mike right there, kind of your, your third read working back towards the front side and just got to give him a better ball. I want to get to him quick because I know he saw the green grass. Just the sixth time it's hit the turf tonight. Hires 25 for 31 as he's under duress and going down. Ryan Richardson, the senior from right here in Birmingham, Winona High School zone with the sack. And again, for shorter right there, that is a big, big play. Trying to set up something. He just shot through the gap, ends up being right there in Michael Hires' lap. And again, now for shorter, you got him in third and long, something you haven't seen in a long time in this ball game. So you want to create some momentum and very good job coming out here in the second half and applying pressure there to the Sanford offense. So third and very long for Hires and Sanford. His throw is over the top of Ty King. And the Bulldogs are going to be forced to punt it away. Yeah, you can tell Michael knew as soon as he let that thing go, it was going to sail on him. He had Ty King right there working back up on the curl. Ended up being open, just a bad ball there over the top and something we haven't seen often and that is the Sanford punter out here you get a three and out to start things out for your shorter defense that's a positive right here in the right direction for this Hawks uh, defensive unit just the second punt of the night for the freshman from Australia Will Thorley that pro kick Australia program Sanford going back down under once again for a punter Thorley sends it high end over end down the right side. And backs up, takes a shorter hop, and is 
down to around the 27 yard line. Tyrese Ross on kick coverage stops it there. That's where Shorter will touch the football for the first time in the second half. And again, you'll take this. You know, there's not there's not enough plays right now that you have to create any sort of real, you know, mark in this deficit, but your defense goes out and gives up one first down, makes, you know, this offense punt, and now you just want to put something together, have a nice drive to get, to make yourself feel a little confident here in the second half. Harold Cook on first down, gives over the left side. Not a bad gain on first down for Justice Durant. That's another thing for this shorter team, too. They're, again, it, it is early, but they're not showing any quit. They're not They're not laying down and just accepting anything that's coming to them. Like, they're going out and continuing to play football, and that's the only thing you can really do at this situation is to try, try your best to make something. And, again, it's the second half, and, boy, there goes that Sanford defense again. Yeah, Noah Barton <laughs> in on the carnage again. How many times have we called his name tonight? And, again, it makes it so easy – when your defensive line is really directing the line of scrimmage, they're pushing their guys back and letting these linebackers just roam free. And I mean, they're coming with bad intentions when you've got, you know, Mosley and, and Martin and, and Cotton really, really playing their gaps very well. So after a gain on five on first down, a loss of four on second down, another third and long for the Hawks. Cook well protected over the middle and complete. Behind his intended target, Trevor Dearden. And Shorter goes three and out. And that's the thing about the secondary. They have been making the windows extremely, extremely tight and tough for Cook to find something. And the plays that he does have, he's got to make that. And, again, I know it's going to be quick, and you're kind of looking with a drop A to coverage and just really just trying to find a window to put something in. Ball kind of sails on him there on a the skinny post, and now you're looking at a three and out for this Sanford offense. Again, about to get the ball with not much time off the clock. So Wyatt Walters to send it away, and before that, a flag down. And I think Shorter's got 12 Legal in formation. Offense. Offense. Offense, more than 11 in formation. Five-yard penalty, remains fourth down. And no matter who you are, every coach in America, that, that'll make you lose it because you've got to be aware of who's in, who's out, especially because you're on the sideline, you you alert punt, you alert punt return to make sure you have 11. You count them up and you send them on out, but right there to have 12 coming out in the punt formation, that is, I know Coach Morrison will not be happy about that. So now on fourth and 14, Wyatt Walters will punt it away for the eighth time tonight. Good spiraling kick, forces Chandler Smith back. He makes the fair catch all the way around the 30. Punt of about 44 yards. Sanford gets the football back officially at the 31. Bulldogs on top, 49 to seven. The offense set to touch the football once again when we return after this quick break. Holston Gases is proud to announce we are the official gas supplier to the Southern Conference. Since 1921, the Southern Conference has been developing student athletes to produce lifelong leaders and role models. Holston Gases is in or near seven of the Southern Conference cities and is proud to partner with the Southern Conference to continue the excellence of producing lifelong leaders and role models. Look for the Holston Gases Green Diamond logo in your area. Holston Gases delivering industrial, medical, propane, and CO2 gases along with welding and safety supplies. At Southeastern Freight Lines, our driving force is a commitment to quality without question. And we're seeking future leaders who want to make an impact in their community. Family owned since 1950, Southeastern is a best-in-class carrier offering outstanding pay and benefits, a strong culture of integrity, and comprehensive training with top-notch equipment and service centers. There's never been a more exciting time to take the driver's seat. Join our team at seflcareers.com. Tasha, did you know Geico could save you hundreds on car insurance and a whole lot more? So what are you waiting for? Hip-hop group tag team to help you plan dessert? Uh -huh. 
Switch today and see all the ways you could save. Welcome back to Birmingham, Alabama. Blake Gardner, Damian Mitchell, Lyndon Blake, your crew here on this Thursday night as we get this college football season started. Sanford, one of the favorites in the Southern Conference, along with the Furman Paladins. Both in action on this Thursday as Sanford's offense gets right to work. A quick catch for the freshman, Brendan Jenkins. True freshman who's worked his way into the two deep to start 2023. He's got six on first down. And you look at this offense, they're lining right back up. You'd think here in the second half with them having such a big lead that they probably slow it down just a little bit. And I think that's kind of what they're doing this drive right here to ensure that they're in the best position. Just go out there and execute, continue to chew some clock, make this game a little bit quicker. Give off the left side for Witherspoon, who gets across the 40, maybe the 41, close to first down yardage. Hudson there on the stop, along with Trey Thomas and a couple others. And another shorter player, a bit slow to get up near the Sanford sideline. Time out. It looks like a Birmingham native, Ryan Richardson, who had the sack of hires on the first possession of this third quarter. It looks like he's okay, just needed a moment. Yeah, he got up and hustled off on his own power, so. Just yes, a little bit good. of cardio for the trainer and staff, you know? Yeah. Got to run that 50 yards across and now 50 <laughs> back. Like I said, it's week one for everybody. <laughs> Demonte Witherspoon did get credit for the first down. A gain of four officially. 21 first downs tonight for the Sanford Bulldogs, who are record-breaking in that department a year ago, moving the chains. Another touch for Witherspoon, this time hit in the backfield and dropped. Good pursuit by Kobe Butts, the sophomore from Macon. Yeah, he just shot through the gap right there. They're trying to work the inside zone. Well, actually, the outside zone right there, kind of going a little flat. Got extended, squeezed through that gap. Got skinny through a double team, and boom. That was a good play. Officially no gain, maybe a loss of about half a yard. As Hires will pass on second down. A quick throw is caught. That's enough to move the sticks across midfield. A first down for Mason. Again, another completion to another receiver. And again, this air raid system, it's all about getting in space and Michael just knowing exactly where to go with the football, not trying to force anything, not trying to go above and beyond, just kind of take what the defense is giving you and just make efficient and smart throws. Mason targeted again, not this time, but here come the flags. Trey Thomas looked like he had an arm around Mason's waist. This should be pass interference. Yeah, I got there a little early trying to reach across. That backhand was pretty secure and hooked on Mason right there. Ends up getting a P.I. That's interference. Defense, number one, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, just got there a little early, hooked him. Trying to make a play. It was that back judge that threw the flag. That's that's the one that can see that arm hooked around yep. back there. So an automatic, an automatic first down moves things inside the shorter 35. Hires off the play fake, wants it all down the sideline. Looking for Jenkins. Oh. He's got it. He's got a touchdown. The true freshman hauls it in, and he's got his first career score. Michael Hires is a bad man. He pulls that and literally drops it in the bucket. That is a that that's an NFL type throw from one hash to the other. Perfect spiral turns over and just drops it in the corner. That is teach tape for quarterbacks. And again, 
<laughs> talked about this offense picking up where they left off. But that right there, again, for somebody that completed 76 of his pass, 76 percent of his passes last year, yeah, he's picking up right where he left off. Going on the field is a touchdown. The previous plays under video review. Referees want to take an extra couple looks <laughs> at that grab. The feet are good. I think it's a matter of whether he got he the ball. the plane or not, but I, I mean, I'm just still amazed by the throw, man. Like, you see, you don't see too many quarterbacks, especially at this level, make a throw like that, that confident and and that flow. Like, I mean, that was, that was perfect. And then on top of that, being a true freshman, being on the other end of that, just making plays for your quarterback, just dropping it in and having enough trust and the strong hands, man, that was beautiful. Definitely a catch. Foot down, ball secured. Right, just guess, guess you're just looking, okay, did it break the plane or kind of where he was? But Man, what a play. Brandon Jenkins playing in his first career college football game. The true freshman from Georgia won the 7A state title last year at Mill Creek High School. And really the only freshman to break into this too deep of Sanford receivers, and it is an experienced receiver. It exactly. says a lot about the summer and the camp that he had. Absolutely, man, to come in and find his way onto the field in a, in a very, very, like you said, a deep, deep receiver rotation and finally going out there and making some plays. And, I mean, when you look at somebody like that, especially as a true freshman playing with some – He's playing with some real, like, grad transfers, guys that have been playing since 2018, guys that were playing while he was still pretty much in junior high, and he goes out and makes a play as a freshman. You love to see something like that, and the guy that, I mean, he's going to have a bright, bright future if he's making plays like that on the opposite side. It is confirmed. Jenkins has his first career touchdown. It's the fifth of the night for Michael Hires. He's now over 40 career Sanford touchdowns as Beaver Stock's extra point is wide left. That is no good. So it'll stay 55 to seven, Sanford on top. After a 28 points, I think it's a 35 point second quarter, 14 in the first. Sanford tacks on six more early in the second half. Bulldogs continue to extend the lead here at home. How can we target deadly diseases with better precision? At Houston Methodist, we're developing technology that delivers life-saving immunotherapy directly inside the tumor for cancer patients. We're also pioneering an implantable device that administers precise and timely doses of medication to those with difficult to manage chronic conditions. That's the difference between practicing medicine and leading it. Houston Methodist, leading medicine. When you drive a Ram, summer is more than a season. It's an opportunity to load up on more toys, to stop looking for fun and be the one who brings it, and to make every day even more inviting than the last. Make this the summer you drive America's best light duty pickup. During the Ram Labor Day sales event, get 4,000 retail consumer cash allowance on most 2023 Ram 1500 trucks. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, mango is a mood. One taste of our Mango Berry Cosmo or Mango Monsoon smoothies in vacay mode is on. Ooh, and our Mango Bacon Brie Flatbread is a total vibe. Get your Mango Mojo on at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. It's Tropic time. 180, 180. Hello, Patrick Mahomes. Who do you even play for? T-Mobile. T-Mobile has plans that make upgrades work for you. They even have a plan which makes you upgrade ready every year. That's good play, Colin. Cheers. Take charge of your upgrades with our best Go 5G plans at T-Mobile. Hello, welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order, please? What do you want? What do you want? Quarter pounder with cheese. Royale with cheese. I haven't had a Big Mac in a long time. How many filet of fishes did you eat? That's over several months, Ryan. In Puerto Rico, a McFlurry eats cola, Senor Flurry. Two golden menus. McDonald's. 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 They're McDonald's. I'm McDonald's. Are you going to order something? 55-7, Sanford on top as we welcome you back to our coverage of college football here on ESPN and the ESPN app. Bulldogs offense, 
Brown has rolled up over 400 yards. Michael Hires, the standout quarterback with five passing touchdowns. Sanford continues to tack on against the Gulf South Conference's shorter Hawks. Bulldog special teams has played a big part in the night as well. Sanford gets ready to send it deep once more. Henry Bishop has forced quite a few returns tonight from Jalen Marshall. Quite a few of those returns have ended up short of the 25-yard line. Line drive kick this time from Bishop towards the corner and into the end zone for a shorter touchback as there's more extracurricular activity on a kickoff. No flags fly in this time, but looked like a couple of guys that were locked up. Jordan Russell on the Sanford side of things. That's the thing about this game, man. You don't don't want to lose your cool, don't want to lose your temper. Just keep everything between the whistles, especially for Sanford. You don't want to get a bonehead penalty, give them a free 15. And, I mean, for sure, you just got to try to find a way to climb back at some situation, somehow, some way, somewhere. So Shorter will set up the offense at their own 25-yard line. Harold Cook and Noah Holland in the backfield as Cook on a short drop, fires far side, and has a man. It's a gain of about five yards for Trevor Dearden, the sophomore from St. Augustine. Now you're looking at a second and short, second and fives, so trying to get something, trying to sustain a drive some way. And like, again, you're looking for those small victories play by play and just start to stack them up consistently. Throw to the near side this time. Doesn't quite reach its intended target. A little bit short for Brandon McGill. Find yourself in the third and five. You're backed up. Again, they found themselves in these situations a lot today. And the Sanford defense has really, really stepped up and bowed up to make a point that they're not going to do anything on third down. Again, you go to Chris Boone, the defensive coordinator. He told us in the meetings, third down. That's one of the most important downs and create limited to the explosives. And that's something that they've done. Outside of that one big touchdown play, they've done just about everything that Coach Boone has asked them for the defensive side of the ball. Hawks one for nine on third down so far this evening. Cook delivers a first down and more across the 45 to the 47. That's his running back, Noah Holland, who moves the sticks on a gain of 16. And that's a big, big third down right there for, for Shorter to, again, create some sort of momentum. That's one big play that you'll go back and say, hey, we won that third down. We're finally starting to put a drive together here late. You'll take it any way you can at this point. Holland pushes forward for a couple. Mackay Gilbert had a couple of hands on him. Holland, an experienced guy. The grad transfer from Miles College nearby Fairfield, Alabama. Started his career there now in his third and final season at Shorter. Shorter tries to find a little bit of joy on the ground. Just two rushing yards all night for the Shorter rushing attack. And that tells you everything that this front seven there for Sanford has really, really made it difficult for this offense to find any sort of any sort of running room between the lanes. And again, for this defense, they're just attacking. Like when Coach Atcher said right before halftime, they've just been swallowing up and just been swarming all over the ball. A testament to their run defense. Cameron Smith on the stop there. Trevor Dearden has his third catch tonight. Another short but positive gain for the Hawks. Third down and three. Just inside Sanford territory as the clock ticks under eight minutes to go here in the third quarter. Cook gives inside. Holland puts his shoulder down and is not going to get much beyond the 45-yard line. A host of Bulldogs there to greet him, including Josiah Cotton, who lost his lid. Man, I will say the pads are still popping. I promise you that. That was a very physical, physical quick run. Right there again, like this attacking style of this defense, man, just from every single level, it feels like there's always four or five guys just around the football with bad intentions ready to inflict punishment there defensively. I mean, 
you can tell this defense really has taken the identity of Coach Boone, like just hard nose and – you could tell in the meetings that we had, it's full of energy. He stays locked in, very, very meticulous in what he wants and what he wants to accomplish. And that's tipped away, incomplete. Cameron Smith got a piece of it. And on fourth down, the Hawks can't convert. They turn it over. Good coverage there by Cameron Smith, the junior transfer from Charleston Southern, a key piece, or gonna be a key piece in the Sanford secondary. Yeah, big play right there, fourth down. Put your offense back on the field. Do you think we see Hires come back in with the score being the way it is? I don't think so. No, we won't. It looks like Sanford has officially made a quarterback change. So Quincy Crittenden takes over, the junior from Decatur, Alabama. What a story and a revelation he was at the end of last season. The former walk-on oh. substituted late after Hires' injury. Started a couple of games down the stretch. He's running on first down and picks up maybe three or four. Yeah, a guy that has played a lot. And again, to be in that backup role, and he played in play in the FCS playoffs. Started games there for Sanford when Michael was out. So he knows how to execute this offense at a high level because he's done it before. And right on cue, he finds an open receiver across the 30, inside the 25. A chunk gain for Ian Cousin, the transfer from Kennesaw State. And again, this offense is still executing at a high level, still rolling. And I, I mean, the identity hasn't changed. Up after a first down, quick play. Ooh, good move. Cousin jukes and gets across the 15, close to another first down gain. And that's exactly what you, see, what you want to see from your second unit to come in and still not have any drop off. The defensive line still hadn't even got set yet, and they're lining up running another play. And that just goes to show you the, the, the belief and the understanding that this offense has. No matter what, they know what the level is. And again, we talk about the veterans on this team. These guys have continued just to roll on and roll on. Crittenden drops to pass, looking for the end zone, and it's off the hands of Thomas D'Armand, incomplete. Trey Thomas was in on the coverage nearby. It brings up second and goal. As the receiver in me is like, man, it hit your hands, got to snag it. Could have been a better ball, could have been a better snag. No, enough blame to go around, but either way, it makes it a third down. Give off the right side, plenty of room, a dive for the end zone, a touchdown. Michael Hamilton, the transfer from USF, finds pay dirt. Again, just presses it on the outside zone, continues to run the track, find green grass. There he is, just trying to push it through the end zone, finds a way to get in. The first Sanford touchdown Graduate in the transfer, Michael Hamilton. Now all three of the main running backs for the Bulldogs have found the end zone tonight. Two touchdowns for Witherspoon, one for Jay Stanton with the rushing department, one in the receiving the department for Stanton. Is video review. Hamilton's got a touchdown to his credit as well, pending a replay review. Just got to be sure you definitely don't want to take the touchdown away from him, man. Never want to take the stats away. But again, everything from this offensive side has really, really been smooth operation at every level. Being able to run the ball, being able to pass the ball, really haven't had really hadn't seen much pressure from the offensive line. They've been doing a pretty sturdy job of just going out and just doing what they need to do, playing up on their blocks and looks like uh yeah, it looks like it might be down there at the one. Good effort in extension. Angle from above might be our best bet. Previous after, after video review, running on the field stands, touchdown. Not, not enough to overturn it though. And Hamilton does indeed have his first Sanford touchdown. Sanford now over 60 tonight, 61 points pending. One more right here. Four hundred and sixty-three yards of total offense for the Bulldogs. Michael Hires led plenty of scoring drives. Quincy Crittenden leads his first scoring drive of the night as this extra point is good. 
So Beaver Stock with just one blemish on his record tonight. Tacks on the PAT, Sanford's lead continues to grow. 62 to seven, Bulldogs over the Hawks as we play on in the second half. We're on week one of this college football season at Birmingham. Tiramisu. Ooh, tiramisu. Or save up and eat tiramisu in Italy. Okay, little Italy. Autumn in New York, the lights of Broadway. Wait, did I pay the light bill? Yeah. No, I paid it, didn't I? Wait, no. Yes, what? Huh, regions. Tiramisu. 87% of people think about money all the time. Regions convenient new ways to track your transactions, make it easier to get back to the moment. Back here in Birmingham, Alabama, all Sanford tonight against Division II Shorter. As the Hawks get set to get the football back, Blake Gardner, Damian Mitchell, Lyndon Blake. Let's check in with Lyndon down on the sideline. Lyndon. Hey, guys. I'm going to talk about Coach Morrison for the Shorter Hawks. He is a people person. I can tell you that just from the few times I've interviewed him this week. But if you don't believe me, maybe this will show you. So. He is a Hawk alum. He played for Shorter on the inaugural team from 05 to 08. Even when he was coaching high school football around Georgia, he was still involved with the Shorter football program, gearing up the Letterman Club over there for the Hawks. He told me he has every single former player's either number or social media account, and he stays in touch with them all. Isn't that pretty impressive? Super impressive. And what a story Morrison was, right? Playing on that inaugural team, eventually taking the head coaching job at his alma mater. His first game as a career coach was here against Sanford back in 2018. Trying to build up a program that was in pretty dire straits when he took it over. They had lost 22 straight games before he took it over. Last year went three and eight, submitting their last year in the Gulf South Conference before moving to the Conference of the Carolinas. Just trying to build a winning culture. And, Damien, it just takes so much time to it do does. that. It does. It does. But you want to have somebody that's that's breathed it, that lived it, that's been through it. And like you said, to have those connections and build it up, It like you said, it just takes so much time. But he's going about it the right way. And, I mean, like you talked about in the meetings, like he's, his energy is there. He's not going to give up on his team. I promise you that. And, again, it's just it, it's unfortunate that you got to be in a situation like this but you continue to watch this program grow game in and game out. Because even last year, going three and eight, they were competing in a lot of games. They weren't just complete blowouts besides just one. And most of them kind of just a play here, play there, ends up going out of, you know, getting out of hand. But he's definitely doing it in the right direction. And, you know, Rich, nothing but the best for Coach Morrison and his, you know, his shorter Hawks moving forward. Good completion there to the big tight end. Deedle back in the mix. And he's... Just shy of a first down, a pickup of about 11, maybe 12. Good throw and catch right there. A name that we haven't really heard much. And again, if he's your best playmaker, you want to find a way to really, really key in and find a, a place for him to get him the ball. 
in some sort of way. Just his fourth target tonight after he made the touchdown catch in the first half. Third down and two for the Hawks. Cook gives to Dollard, and Dollard scoots forward, and I think he's got just enough for the first down. Yeah, he's able to squeeze in there, and again, hasn't been much running room for the shorter Hawks there on the offensive line. And again, a lot of credit to this Sanford defensive front. They've been able to really, really penetrate and you know, push the line of scrimmage back there for the defensive front. And they've been doing a good job. But for shorter, again, just you got a first down on the third down, so you will take it and continue to keep this thing moving forward. You just want to build a drive and continue to move forward in a positive motion. Just the eighth first down of the night for shorter compared to 26 for Sanford this evening. Under four minutes to go here in the third. Another give inside and another hole up the middle. A good chunk, maybe seven or eight yards for the junior from Titusville, Jaden Dollard. And again, for shorter, you will take it. If you find these creases and there haven't been many, you want to be able to take as much advantage as you possibly can on a drive like this and just build towards something. It might not be this this next week, but definitely towards the future here in this, this, this early 2023 season. Dollard, another touch, this time hit in the backfield. Getting just enough of him, Cody Jansen. Reserve linebacker and transfer from Sioux Falls on the stop. And now you're getting a lot of people here. You're emptying the depth chart there on the defensive side for Sanford. You're just trying to get as many bodies out there. Your starters are out. And now you're getting the guys to get some real, real quality reps here in 2023 and really build some more depth here as the season goes on because it is a long, long season in football. Deep drop for Cook on third and four. Over the middle has a man. Trevor Dearden rises to make the catch. He's got a first down inside Sanford territory to the 42. That was a great play by Cook by standing tall in that pocket and really, really being patient and then finding a spot and a great play. A 13 going up in full extension and again, third down, making a play, continuing this momentum here for this shorter Hawk team. And before the snap on first down, flags fly and pre-snap motion. Offense, number 71. Five-yard penalty remains third down. Correction, first down. Yeah, offensive line just getting an early head start there. And his pass set. And for all that forward momentum, you've made it. Five yards back there, pre-snap penalties. Want to keep those to a minimum. Just two penalties tonight for Sanford. That's the eighth for the Hawks. So first and 10 turns into first and 15. The long throw hauled in by McGill, and he gets most of that penalty yardage back. Second catch of the night for Brandon McGill. Seven different Hawks with reception so far this evening. Sanford continues to shuffle defensively. Midnight Stewart into the game. Jalen Nelson out on second and 10. Low snap, handle well by Cook though. A deep drop and flushed out to his right. Cook near the sideline, was it caught? Yes, was the inbounds? No. So that'll go as an incomplete pass intended for Justice Duran. Now you got him in a third and long situation again right here for the Sanford defense. And for this second unit, you're getting situational football in an actual game. And I think those are the reps that you really want to take advantage of in these situations right here. You got him in third and long. Definitely want to get him off the field and hold them to no points if possible and put it on their, field, their foot for a punt. Average third down distance snipe for shorter has been 9.2 yards. This is third down and 10. Empty backfield. Cook delivers over the middle, caught by Moss Teller. He's got the first down near the 30 before he was taken down by Bryce Graves, the Elon transfer. Yeah, you can see Coach Boone is not happy there on the sideline, still coaching hard there and finding, uh, giving up a third and 10. You know he doesn't want to see that, but again, for shorter, you're making a drive, you're sustaining the drive. You will take it right here in the second half, completely washing the first, and now you're finding yourself signing some rhythm and a big play right there. Now you find yourself in the red zone, something where you haven't been, you know, all day. Tre Trevor Deard in another grab, his sixth of the night, a team high. A good ball here from Cook. 
And right there across the middle, safety's got to be over the top right there to prevent that from happening. And now, again, in the red zone, you definitely want to find a way to punch this thing in if you're shorter. Because like Coach Morrison said, if you, if you find a way to score more in the second half than you did the first, yeah, you will consider it a victory. On first and goal, Cook with time now running out, flush to his right, racing for the pylon. Can he get there? Yes, he can. Touchdown shorter, Harold Cook dives into the end zone. Yeah, he took a pretty hard fall there after the dive and really laying out for a touchdown. And again, for shorter, you'll take it. You will absolutely take it for Sanford. You definitely don't want to give up something like that. But that's good hustle and play by right there by Cook. Everything is covered. And just got to beat him to the pylon there for a touchdown. Harold Cook is still down, receiving some medical attention. Hopefully he's okay. We'll take a break as the third quarter comes to a close. Shorter their second touchdown of the night. We'll check on their starting quarterback when we come back. How do we speed recovery for our patients? At Houston Methodist, we're improving surgical accuracy by mapping each patient's unique brain anatomy. We're also using advanced visualization technology for heart patients, allowing us to see better and heal you faster. That's the difference between practicing medicine and leading it. Houston Methodist, leading medicine. When you drive a Ram, summer is more than a season. It's an opportunity to get more in before the sun goes down. Make this the summer. You drive America's best light-duty pickup. Popeye's new sweet and spicy wings don't make sense. Marinated and tossed in a blend of chili, garlic, and ginger, as sweet as they are spicy. Nice catch, butterfingers. Just like my <laughs> Nana. We don't make... Extra point up, and it is good for Tyler Simpson and Shorter. As the Hawks do tack on an extra point, make it 62 to 14 our score. Good news was Harold Cook was able to jog over to the Shorter sideline under his own power. After scrambling to the right and sneaking into the end zone for the second Hawks touchdown of the evening. Positive to take away for the Hawks as we get set for quarter number four after this quick timeout. Those new tiles are falling right into place until you run out of, what are those called again? Oh, right. The Home Depot app is made for doing that doesn't miss a beat. So you can find what you need fast and keep things moving in the right direction. For doing that doesn't stop, download the Home Depot app. It's made for doing. How can we target deadly diseases with better precision? At Houston Methodist, we're developing technology that delivers life-saving immunotherapy directly inside the tumor for cancer patients. We're also pioneering an implantable device that administers precise and timely doses of medication to those with difficult to manage chronic conditions. That's the difference between practicing medicine and leading it. Houston Methodist, leading medicine. Popeye's new sweet and spicy wings are perfectly sweet and wonderfully spicy, just like my Nana. These are delicious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why I know you didn't make them. <laughs> we don't make sense. We make chicken. Love that chicken from Popeye's. 180, 180. Hello, Patrick Mahomes. Hold on. Wait, who do you even play for? T-Mobile. And I'm here to protect you from wireless companies that blitz you with phone deals that sack you with a three-year device contract. Even I can get sacked? Not at T-Mobile. They have plans that make upgrades work for you. They even have a plan which makes you upgrade ready every year. Thanks, man. Now can I do the thing? Do the same. Excellent. Take charge of your upgrades with our best Go 5G plans at T-Mobile. Let's have a huddle. You don't know what huddle is, do you? No. When you drive a Ram, summer is more than a season. It's an opportunity to load up on more toys, to stop looking for fun, and be the one who brings it and to make every day even more inviting than the last. Make this the summer you drive America's best light duty pickup. 
During the Ram Labor Day sales event, get 4,000 retail consumer cash allowance on most 2023 Ram 1500 trucks. Eat pretzels. Eat more pretzels. Watch movies. Watch more movies. Get airline miles. Get one key cash. Book in app to earn one key cash on top of your airline miles. On season six of Fansville, it's the last year of college football as we know it. What's going on? The road to the playoff is expanding. To 12 lanes. Rivalries are crumbling. Why are you leaving? TV revenue. We wouldn't understand. So we're just not rivals anymore? Tensions are rising. Where's the flag? These refs should be criminally investigated. Do something! Because this season, things are heating up. What's happening, Sheriff? It's a transfer portal. It's out of control. Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. Well, back here on the Sanford University campus, the Sanford Hall of Fame, not too far away here on the west side of campus, outside of Birmingham at Homewood. Three, three quarters, the number nine team in FCS, the Sanford Bulldogs all over shorter, 62 to 14. Bulldogs football team hoping they get a few more names in that Sanford Athletics Hall of Fame. Of course, Bobby Bowden, one of the most prominent in that group. Bobby Bowden field here at Seibert Stadium. Coach Bowden's alma mater, Sanford University, his statue outside the Eastern Gates. Here at Seibert Stadium, his presence looms large. His Bulldogs trying to get back to the FCS playoffs for the second straight year as the fourth quarter gets underway. This kick will bounce right in front of the goal line and stay in play, so Jenkins has to field it. And Brandon Jenkins will take this across the 20, maybe the 22 with a flag down. I think it might be a hold there on the return. I even talk about a guy with a bright future, Jenkins, a true freshman finding a way on the football field, really just getting into rotation at their receiver position. And like we talk about that depth out there, wide out, and him making a way even as a young guy. Future is really, really bright for him. Going to return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team, number zero. Then at least half the distance to the goal. First down, Sanford. That's David Coltrane, backup defensive player, call for the block in the back right there. Yeah. Of course, number zero last year was Chandler Smith. He now wears that number five jersey that's so special to the Sanford program. Instead of Sanford starting across the 20, they're going to go half the distance from the 10. So first down and 10 from the five-yard line for this Bulldogs offensive attack. An offense that really, really just has been rolling today to start things off. And, I mean, if you're Coach Hatcher, he did say going into halftime they didn't execute at the level in which he wanted, but pretty much every possession besides the first one ended with touchdown. Crittenden back to throw just a little bit too much on that one. Looking for Michael Weiss, the once Sanford Bulldog, then Troy Trojan, now Sanford Bulldog once more. So it'll be second down and 10 for Crittenden and company. Yeah, ball that just kind of got away from him right there. Clearing it all out. Michael Weiss, like you said, a name that we hadn't heard in a while, comes back and said he was battling injuries there, trying to get back into that rotation because he did have a big, big 2021 year, 2021 season there when Liam Welch was at quarterback for the, for the Bulldogs at that time. That pass broken up, intended. For a new wide receiver, Noah Young, but Trey Thomas jumped it. It's something we haven't seen in a long time, a third and long for this Sanford Bulldog offense. And, you know, Quincy just a hitch step late right there, leaving the ball a little inside on the hitch route. Definitely don't want to do that. Could have been touchdown the other way for the shorter Hawks. So third and long, quick throw for Crittenden out to the flat. Is caught by Ismail, who spins away from one. Dives forward to about the 13, maybe the 14 yard line, but he's gonna be a yard or two short of first down yardage. It's gonna force Sanford to punt the football away. Yeah, you just definitely don't wanna finish out too flat for right here if you're Sanford. Of course, you want every drive to end with a touchdown or some sort of point, but 
against. Right now, you're going into going into a situation. You got young guys in there making some, getting some burn, getting some reps, and now you're starting to see a little bit. Last thing Coach Hatcher wants to do is burn a timeout right here, and I think he's about to. Not everybody's on the field. Yeah, Sanford was about to punt that away with ten guys in the field, so. Bulldogs will use the first time out they have taken all night long. 13.52 left to go in the game. Bulldogs finally take their first time out. Sanford on top, set to punt the football away. Less than 14 minutes to go here in Birmingham when we return in just a moment. Helping your child stay active comes with hits and misses. Having Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama and access to the state's largest network of doctors for the whole family gives you peace of mind, no matter what path you choose. Because finding something that works for you and your family feels pretty great. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, we cover what matters. Here to live action, Seinfeld Stadium. Punt reaches midfield, and that's where Shorter's offense will take over with a little more than 13 minutes left to go in the game. Blake Gardner, Damian Mitchell, Lyndon Blake are crew here on this Thursday night in Birmingham. Well, Lyndon, the Bulldogs certainly have had plenty to celebrate after a historic 2022 campaign that saw them go to the FCS quarterfinals. And it became official just a few days before the game that their head man's going to be sticking around Birmingham for quite some time. What better way to start this season than knowing your winningest coach in school history just signed on for four more years. Chris Hatcher entering his ninth season. He signed that four-year contract extension through January of 2027. It was funny when the news came out this past week. He's like, yeah, we've been working on this. I'm happy to be at Sanford. Happy we came to an agreement. And it was kind of like the jokes on all of us. He was like, I don't know they were telling me guys today, but yeah, we're happy here. He's always so chill. The players love him. They love to do their best Chris Hatcher impressions. And it's just really fun to see this team gel together, especially after such a successful 2022 campaign. Yeah, Sanford Southern Conference champions last year, their first outright conference championship going all the way back to 1936. They went 11 and 2. They were unbeaten. Southern Conference play a year ago and 13 minutes away from starting this campaign with the W as Joshua Brown has taken over at quarterback for shorter. Picked up first down yardage on his first snap. His second one good for a couple of yards to Jaden Dollar. Wow, you see somebody get flipped out there. <laughs> 45 is out there blocking and you know to, to test Chris Hatcher and what he's built with this program, you know, going to the playoffs last season and then coming out here in 2023 and really putting on a great performance. Kind of attest to, you know, him as a person. Whenever you you know you're around Coach Hatcher, he's full of energy, he's just a kind, soft spoken guy, but then you get him in coach mode and he, he can flip that switch when need be, but Really, really proud of everything that he's accomplished here at Sanford. And like like Lyndon said, you know, you don't think of Sanford football without thinking of what Chris Hatcher has done here for this program. Good carry there by Durant. Picks up a few more yards. There is the head man, Chris Hatcher, now in his ninth season at Sanford. 51 wins here on the Sanford campus. 172 in his career. Three FCS playoff appearances, looking for a fourth here in 2023, starting this campaign inside the FCS top 10. They've rolled up 62 points tonight in their season opener. Third down and seven for the Hawks. The redshirt freshman Joshua Brown, a quick drop, a throw, a catch, but short of the line to gain for Bo Mosteller. It's gonna bring up fourth and short. Long throw there on the sideline, good throw and catch. 
find yourself in a fourth down situation. Really want to see the Sanford defense. I know Coach Boone, he's still down there on the sideline coaching his tail off and making sure these guys are locked in and really holding them right here on a big time fourth down play for Shorter and for Sanford defense. Shorter was nine for 22 on fourth downs a year ago. 0 for one so far tonight. Play clock at one. Hawks get it off. Brown, plenty of time looking for the end zone. It's knocked away, incomplete. Cameron Smith with great coverage. And the Bulldogs defense turns Shorter over on downs for the second time tonight. That's actually a great play without interfering. Staying right there on his hip, playing through the ball over the top because, I mean, it wasn't a bad throw. Really a tight one and, I mean, a great performance, great play by the defensive back right there and really just getting over the top and boom. Playing through his hands. Big stop right there on fourth down, give it back to the Sanford offense. And, again, Quincy getting another, another drive in him for the second unit, the second group. And, again, for the offense here for Sanford, you just want to go out and have a clean, clean drive. Don't want to have to punt if you don't have to. On first down, a give. And plenty of running room. 11, maybe 12 yards for Michael Hamilton. What a circuitous career it's been for Hamilton. Started his career at Southwest Oklahoma State, then Ellsworth Community College, then USF. Now here playing his final season of college football as a Sanford Bulldog. And I tell you, that could transfer portal something else, man. <laughs> Plenty of player movement across college football when you toss in the proliferation of the transfer portal, toss in the extra COVID year a lot of guys were granted. Right. <laughs> These guys have played some college football for some years, man. It's an older Sanford team, Hamilton. Certainly qualifies as one of those guys as he's got more room to work with. A hurdle. Gets him up near midfield, dropped around the 48. He's definitely got a, a different gear. He got a little different pep in his step. It seems like when he finds it, he really puts his foot in the ground and goes with it. Gosh, I, I still don't understand how people hurt him. <laughs> Last thing you want to do on the football field is leave your feet, but the way these athletes are now, man, they'll – pop right back up in the way that sports medicine is and then everything else. I mean, these guys are just, they're, they're gladiators. Play, act, play action this time. Crittenden keeps it, fires it to the sideline. That is caught. Good catch. Good for a first down. I and Cousin, his second grab tonight. And he's got the wind knocked out of him right there. Kind of just crawled off over to the sideline. That's it up for Sanford first down. Full extension there on the sideline. That was a great play, great catch. And for Quincy, he just put the ball right there where either he was going to catch or it was going to go out of bounds. And, yeah, he dove and kind of just lands on top of the ball, kind of just takes the wind out of you. Cousins third grab tonight, by the way. One of 11 Sanford receivers to get in on the mix. Good cut by Hamilton. Turns it up the field across the 35. A pickup of nine on first down. 12 carries tonight for DeMonte Witherspoon. Four carries for Jay Stanton. Let's go along with a couple of receptions. And now five, six carries it is for Hamilton. As we approach the eight minute mark here in the fourth quarter, Sanford salting away a big win here in week one. Crittenden gives again. Hamilton knifing through, has first down yardage just across the 32. Clock will continue to move on the first down until we get under two minutes to go here in this fourth quarter, the new rule in college football this year. It takes some getting used to because, again, when you're so accustomed to it, stopping after every first down, now it continues to roll, much like the professional game. And college football, man, is starting to create itself more and more like the professional level. Concern is that's going to take a few more plays out of the game, but hasn't affected Sanford tonight. That's snap <laughs> number 69 as Hamilton gets tripped up. Wow. You just talk about And then you kind of look at the pace and tempo of how Sanford is when they get that first first down, when they're, you know, they're clicking. And now they're in a situation where 
they're just milking and this is kind of their unorthodox way of quote unquote huddling, like huddling. You know, they're lining up, everybody's bunched in tight, get the you know right personnel in, move whatever they need to do, and then right when it's about you know ten nine seconds, boom, they all disperse and get to where they need to get to. It's just a different different way of quote unquote huddling now in college football. On second and long, Hamilton, plenty of running room. Across the 20, inside the 15, bounce down near the 10. Brought down by Trey Thomas after a chunk gain. He found a crease right there, and he's really, really taking full advantage of opportunities that he's given in this situation. Hamilton, really, he's he's found a new, a new gear right here because he knows he's going to be the workhouse, the bell cow right here as they try to grind this game out. And any chance you find any sort of big opening like that, you take advantage of it, and that's something he has been doing here in this whole second half. Mostly heavy personnel for Sanford on this drive. That continues just outside the 10. Hamilton untouched into the end zone. His second touchdown. Just the inside zone. Finds the crease backside, bends it back. There's nobody stopping him between <laughs> him and the end zone. Not a white jersey in sight. And another touchdown for the Sanford offense. Beaver Sox extra point is good, and it's 69 points tonight for the Sanford Bulldogs. Sanford 69, shorter 14, six minutes to go. And what a Sanford debut it's been for Michael Hamilton. 73 yards and a couple of touchdowns to help Sanford salt this game away here late. Those new tiles are falling right into place until you run out of, what are those called again? Oh, right. The Home Depot app is made for doing that doesn't miss a beat. So you can find what you need fast and keep things moving in the right direction. For doing that doesn't stop, download the Home Depot app. It's made for doing. Behind every door at Houston Methodist, you know what to expect. Expertise. Whether it's life-saving brain surgery, your 3D mammogram that catches breast cancer sooner, or orthopedic specialists helping you feel stronger than ever. With hundreds of doors across Houston, you can get expert care everywhere. That's the difference between practicing medicine and leading it. Houston Methodist, leading medicine. When you drive a Ram, summer is more than a season. It's an opportunity to get more in before the sun goes down. Make this the summer. You drive America's best light-duty pickup. 180! 180! Hello, Patrick Mahomes. Hold on. Wait, who do you even play for? T-Mobile. And I'm here to protect you from wireless companies that blitz you with phone deals that sack you with a three-year device contract. Even I can get sacked? Not at T-Mobile. They have plans that make upgrades work for you. They even have a plan which makes you upgrade ready every year. Thanks, man. Now can I do the thing? Do the thing. Excellent. Take charge of your upgrades with our best Go 5G plans at T-Mobile. Let's have a huddle. You don't know what huddle is, do you? No. Popeye's new sweet and spicy wings are perfectly sweet and wonderfully spicy. Just like my Nana. These are delicious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why I know you didn't make them. <laughs> we don't make sense. We make chicken. Love that chicken from Popeye. Well, back here on this Sanford campus. Heard Lyndon Blake down on the sideline talking about all the construction that's happening on the north side of Cybert Stadium here. One of the benefits of working on the construction crew is you get free football over there. <laughs> they have been singing all night long. They have been in the best spirit singing 9 to 5 by Dolly Parton. It's been so much fun to be around. What a vibe from the construction crew. <laughs> just as excited about week one as anybody. <laughs> they just wanted to see some live football, too. If they're going to be out there sweating and grinding, trying to make sure that everything is built up for the $65 million facility, oh, yeah, they want to have some fun, too. <laughs> New kicker for Sanford Forest, Taylor sends it deep. Fielded 
around the two yard line by Marshall. He works his way across the 20 and is forced out of bounds around the 22 yard line by Tyrese Ross. This might be the final offensive series of the night for the Shorter Hawks. And again, you don't want to let this loss kind of beat you down if you're shorter. You know, you knew that the task was going to be tough coming into the game. Again, when you're facing a top 10, a top 10 FCS program, fresh off of a playoff run and with so many veteran guys just all over the field, you kind of expected that it could get out of hand, and that it did. And then you got to give a lot of credit to the Sanford offense. I mean, they're picking up right where they left off, and defensively, this unit just with the body and makeup, pretty much of the resemblance of their defensive coordinator and Coach Boone, you got to tip your cap to this team. I was about to say, Sanford's defense has held Shorter's offense to less than four yards a snap tonight. Noah Holland picks up maybe one there on first down. The good news for the Hawks is it only gets easier. They get Erskine at home in non-conference play next week before their conference home opener comes up in a couple of weeks back in Rome, Georgia. Another give for Holland here. Tries to shake one tackler, couldn't shake a second. As Kobe Stewart was in on the stop, so was Gavin Morris. And again, the thing about these reps that you're getting for the you know second and guys that you know don't get much, you want to be out here and put up quality tape because again, it may come down to with an injury here or there, would you be able to go in and be able to execute at a high level that these teams want you? So don't think that these coaches aren't going to be pounding the tape for the second unit just as hard as they did the first unit as well to see if they can continue to add some more depth and value there for the depth chart moving forward in the season. Brown rolling out on third and six, tucks it and is tracked down for behind. Colby Stewart on the stop is going to force a fourth down. It's like Short is going to choose the punt right here. And again, being able to create and find penetration in the box with only three rushers, that is such a benefit for a defense because it makes it so much easier for your secondary to just go out and play their assignment. If they're corralling the pocket there with just three rushers on five offensive linemen, that's a testament there for the trench work for this Sanford defense. Kobe Stewart played in 10 games last year, figures to play a more prominent role this year. As Walters punts that away into the Sanford bench, much to the dismay of Peyton Ringer, who was back to return the punt, didn't get a crack. So with 3.43 to go here in the fourth quarter, Sanford takes over from just inside their own territory. Blake Gardner, Damian Mitchell, Lyndon Blake, your crew here on this Thursday. And we, we wouldn't, we got to at least mention it's the last official broadcast. Sanford. Lyndon Blake is working as a Blake. She's got <laughs> her wedding coming up. We'll talk a little bit more about that on the other side of our TV timeout. 3.43 timeout. to go. Here in Birmingham with Sanford on top 69 to 14. What a tease! <laughs> with the Home Depot app, the tools to keep the job moving are always in reach. Need specialized equipment? Tool, truck, and equipment rentals are just a tap away. Working a tight schedule? Order with our app and have it delivered to the job site for free. Managing expenses? Use our app to easily track and earn your Pro Extra benefits. For doing that doesn't stop, download the Home Depot app. It's made for doing. Behind every door at Houston Methodist, you know what to expect. Expertise. Whether it's life-saving brain surgery, your 3D mammogram that catches breast cancer sooner, or orthopedic specialists helping you feel stronger than ever, with hundreds of doors across Houston, you can get expert care everywhere. That's the difference between practicing medicine and leading it. Houston Methodist, leading medicine. 180, 180. Hello, Patrick Mahomes. Hold on. Wait, who do you even play for? T-Mobile, and I'm here to protect you from wireless companies that blitz you with phone deals that suck you with a three-year device contract. 
Even I can get set? Not at T-Mobile. They have plans that make upgrades work for you. They even have a plan which makes you upgrade ready every year. Thanks, Ben. Now can I do the thing? Do the thing. Excellent. Take charge of your upgrades with our best Go 5G plans at T-Mobile. Let's have a huddle. You don't know what huddle is, do you? No. Hello, welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order, please? What do you want? Can I this car? Quarter pounder with cheese. Royal with cheese. I haven't had a Big Mac in a long time. How many filet of fishes did you eat? That's over several months, Ryan. In Puerto Rico, I'm at Flurry. It's called a Senor Flurry. Two golden menus. McDonald's. 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 They're McDonald's. I'm McDonald's. Are you gonna order something? Back here in Birmingham, Sanford on top, 69-14. With 3.43 left in the contest. Bulldogs get one more offensive possession, and they'll throw out one more quarterback. Third string quarterback number four, Nick Scalzo. The Kentucky transfer takes over. And on first down, gives to a new running back. It looks like John Collins, the junior from nearby Dora, Alabama, who lost one, maybe two there on first down. Sanford continues to shuffle bodies in and out. Scalzo a part of the quarterback competition a year ago. Hires eventually won the job. Scalzo tore his left ACL. Mm. Cost him the entirety of last season. So good to see him getting some run here early in 2023. Three minutes left in this game. Second down and long. Scalzo play fake this time. Throws it out to the flats. And a short gain for Nick Sparrows, the junior from Alpharetta, Georgia. Really, really slowing this thing down. I, for an offense that just runs so fast and how they execute in such a high clip, I didn't know they would know how to huddle, like just efficiently, just to see it happen. It's like, wow, okay, this is different. I feel like Sanford's not going to huddle a whole lot <laughs> next week. No. Sanford goes to Cullowee to start Southern Conference play to take on Western Carolina before going down to the Plains to take on Auburn. A couple of big games coming up for the Bulldogs, but they'll enter those games 1-0 after closing out shorter tonight. Scalzo on third down, gives it inside, and that is good enough for a first down. John Collins carries for the 32nd first down of the night for the Bulldogs. Wow. You don't hear that often, man. And again, for an offense that just continues to just roll in jail, this is a great start for Sanford here in week one. And again, we're just... They say it's the most wonderful time of the year around December when it gets close to Christmas, but to us, it's college football season. <laughs> so a fresh set of downs for Sanford as we work under two minutes to go here tonight. Scalzo keeps it this time and is dragged down around midfield. We talked before the commercial break. It's Lyndon Blake's last official broadcast as a Blake. Lyndon, you've been down on the sideline all night. What marriage advice have you heard down there? Well, first thing, listen. That's the biggest marriage advice. It's also good advice for football players, you know? Marriage and being a part of a football team, in my world, they kind of go hand in hand, right? I would think so, okay. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm not the only um, engaged lady or person on the sidelines. You know, Michael Hires engaged. He proposed to his longtime girlfriend over the summer. Noah Martin, he put on a great proposal in his hometown of Chattanooga to the Stanford soccer alum that is now his fiance. So we're just a bunch of engaged Stanford people on the Stanford sideline right now. <laughs> Soon to be marital bliss all the way around. Yes, and I, I'll, full disclosure, I am marrying a Stanford employee, Stanford cross country coach, Coach Balio. But mm -hmm. for the record, I'll be Lyndon Blake uh, <clears throat> on air. <laughs> So I'm, I'm continuing the, the trend of the only person not named Blake in the broadcast booth. And the only one not married, right? That is true. We love you, Damian. I appreciate it. Love y'all. Nick Scalzo puts a knee on the turf, and that brings the night to a close. Sanford big winners tonight to start 2023. A final score, 69-14. to 14. Number nine team in the country gets off to a fast start against the Shorter Hawks. Bulldogs officially 1-0. Shorter officially falls 2-0-1 as Sanford gets ready to start Southern Conference play coming up next week.
Damian, for Sanford, this is probably exactly what they were looking for out of week one. Absolutely. Come out and execute at a high level, not have many bad plays, not have many bad situations. And, again, you want to come out clean, injury-free against a team that you knew you were probably better than going into it, but you went out and executed at a high level, and that's exactly what they did. Lyndon Blake standing by with Sanford head coach Chris Hatcher. Take it away, Lyndon. Thanks, guys. Coach, congrats on starting the season out 1-0, the 2023 campaign. You won big against Shorter, but at halftime you said you guys weren't executing all the way like you wanted them to. Did you see improvements in the second half? Uh, maybe a little bit. I still defensively, I thought we played exceptionally well. Offensively, we were just, you know, we'd have 10 men doing what they were supposed to do and one guy not. And, and we talk about no matter who we play, we want to play to the very best of our abilities. And I didn't think we did that consistently enough. Uh, maybe it was a little bit of a wake-up call for some of our guys. Um, we're excited that we won. I mean, that's the goal when you go out and play and compete. Unfortunately, we're able to get a lot of people some, some play in time today, which will help morale. But we have a long ways to go to be a good football team. Michael Hire is able to get the ball to a lot of people. He had true freshman score. You had Witherspoon score two touchdowns, his first in the Sanford uniform. How does that build a confidence when it's a real game and they're making an immediate impact? Well, we're counting on those guys, and, and you said it best. That, you know, getting in the game type atmosphere, you're really not sure what you're going to get out of your players. It's different when you come out and you and you play for real in front of people under the proverbial lights. So I, I did see some good things. I was really pleased. Um, with our backup offensive line went in and Mike Hamilton really made some good runs and he's been battling a little bit of injury during camp but we've been really pleased with him so um, we saw some good things and again I'm not you know upset that we won the game I'm just a little disappointed in some of our execution I thought we would execute a little better than we did. So how do you plan to attack this week of preparation for Western Carolina? Well I'll worry about that one tomorrow we're going to enjoy the victory tonight. We enjoy it happy Labor Day weekend coach. Thank you very much guys. Thanks, Lyndon. Thanks to Sanford head coach Chris Hatcher. His Bulldogs big winners tonight to start this 2023 campaign. Thanks for joining us this evening on ESPN. For Lyndon Blake, Damian Mitchell, and our entire crew here at Bobby Bowden Field at Cybert Stadium. I'm Blake Gardner saying so long from Birmingham, Alabama. Once again, the final score tonight, Sanford 69, Shorter 14. All games airing on ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.